dirt roads to rock crawling, two buck chuck to screaming eagle, moonshine to 50 year old single malt. We talk about it all here on Wheelin' Wine and Whiskey with your hosts, Jason and Chris. Welcome to the Wheeling Wine and Whiskey Podcast, episode 199. Nine! Holy moly. German. This is the German episode. We're getting, we're just one away from 200. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is ridiculous. Who thought? Who thought? I mean, I was looking Nobody. at some stats. Nobody. Not even us. Did you know the show is almost four years old? It's freaking old. We're old. I mean, Lorenzo. I our first episode dropped on Lorenzo's May 9th old. of 2019. 2019, before pre COVID? Is that PC? Oh, it's definitely pre COVID. That's, <laughs> that's what, that's what kept us sane during COVID. <laughs> that's right. It was. It was a savior, our savior for COVID. So, mm. yeah, unbelievable. I mean, we've been uh, enjoying and, some success, which is pretty freaking awesome. And uh, and Lorenzo's still here. Lorenzo's still here. From episode one, he's still sitting on the dining room table. He hasn't lost all of his fur. He's, no, he's looking pretty good. Yep. Yeah. Well, still, I vacuumed him since KOH. Did he get any Valentine's cards or anything? Uh, not that I knew of. I huh. don't think nobody loves his ass. Uh, well, uh, he was no. It's not a very good looking ass. No, it's not. So. It's not. Oh, sorry, Lorenzo. Look, Shit. whatever. He's putting his head down. Chris, you got to be more nice. Supposed <laughs> to be nice to him. He's a little more sensitive nowadays. So, There's, as we said, we're getting closer and closer to episode two hundred. In our previous episode, we kind of alluded to what's going to happen for two hundred. What's happening for two hundred? We're going to have a special guest. Really. A long episode with a very special guest oh. that we've been wanting on the show for a long time. And we did announce it last episode, so it's no secret anymore. But Ian Johnson will be in our 200th episode. Wow. Wow. Ian Johnson. Wow. Television uh, do it yourself host or fabrication host for several, quite a few different shows. Just uh, icon and off road. I mean, it's just, yeah, cool, cool dude. Really, just cool dude, and Absolutely. he loves whiskey, and he loves whiskey, and that and that was was a significant <laughs> portion of our conversation. We didn't we didn't get into a lot of we got into, we talked a lot of different. We stuff talked, we, we went down a lot of different rabbit holes, but we're we're not going to talk about that okay. this episode because this episode's about we've something got completely different. We've got some other people on this. Episode. Oh yeah, it's really cool. Some inside track, yes, of behind the scenes ultra four racing, yes. And um, but before is, we get into that, we got a review, Chris. Yes, we do. We, we need a to read bit of a business review. to conduct. Okay, read the review. Re- read it. Is that an order? Read it. So we have at this point 170 reviews. Wow, our that's average, pretty good. Our average. I'm sorry, 170 ratings mm. with 94 customer reviews, written reviews. Okay. And on of the 170 ratings, we have a five star average. Well, that doesn't suck. Out of no, 10? Out of, <laughs> out of five. Oh, out of five. So we're, five we're, out of five. We're, we're okay. batting 1,000 at hey, this point. Which is that, pretty, Lorenzo. That's freaking awesome, if yeah. you ask me. Yeah. <coughs> Pardon me. I'm still battling. Oh, here. boy. Hammerlung's still alive. Anyway, this comes from a listener with the handle Golden Child. <laughs> the golden child. I like it. Posted. He posted this up. Hopefully it's a he. It could be a she. Well, yeah. Know, we person. can't assume nowadays. Yeah, you just can't. Could be she, him. Shim. Shim. You don't uh, know. <laughs> you just don't know. You just don't know. It's all okay. But uh, posted on February 6th, 2023. And here we go. It's, uh, here we go. These guys have a great show. They're informative and entertaining. They know wheeling, ultra four racing, and have a great group of guests for additional insight. Not only is the show great, but they are generous with their time and super friendly. Highly recommend. Wow. Isn't that cool? That's very cool. That sounds like we met this person. I was going to say we must have met this individual. (laughs) The golden child. So golden child, shout out to us. If you you, you haven't already contacted Jason Mm -hmm. with a DM, DM on Instagram at at Wheeling Wine Whiskey. And he'll send you. Maybe a I'll send you two with that great review. Hell that's, yeah, that's pretty good. And, and let us know if we Throw ran into you down at KOH or at some other event. So. Yeah, yeah, that's Sweet. cool. That was a great review. It's fun. It, it, you know, it was fun at KOH bumping into people. I mean, we had a few people come <laughs> up to us and, you know, hey, we don't want a whiskey, and I'm like, that's pretty freaking cool. Oh yeah. You well, know, like I it's said, humbling. It's, recognize it's our voices and, then, and whatnot. Yeah, I mean, we we heard stories of people, you know, talking about listening to, to us on the way to work, and it's like 
Wow. That, that just blows me away that people, one, want to hear our voices and then, <laughs> and then hear what we have to talk about. But no, it's, it's, that's why we do it. That's exactly why we do it. It's, it's great and uh, our small contribution <laughs> to the off-road community. So. Oh, yeah. No, absolutely. And it, it's, it's all that we can do and we have fun doing it. And we're going to continue doing it as long as it's fun. And so. plus, Lorenzo has us handcuffed to the microphones here, well, so we have is, to do it. He is a taskmaster. You know. He's an ass master. Yeah, ass. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. So, and with that, we're out. <laughs> on that note. So, Jason, do you want to introduce our guest? Yeah, let's do it. This this is good. Um, so, I wanted to circle back. Um, you know, we had a... Uh, <coughs> Being down there at KOH, and uh, of course, uh, Ultravore Jones, uh, he lost. Uh, we have, we have his V card. He has our V card. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, that's right. One of our first. Uh, he is our first. There, our first. And so, anyways, you know, following that story, and he was supposed to ride right seat with our dear friend Eric Wicks, right? Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, Eric no um, had uh, you know that medical issue mm-hmm. well, uh, tore his rotator cuff and couldn't drive and it, it's just like what the fuck? I, I felt so bad it's just a bad luck man so then um aaron smith a a ron um uh, you know dm kevin and goes hey uh you're looking for a right seat i got a right seat open and then that that match uh paired up there so made in heaven. yeah, so we circled around with um, Aaron Smith in a bomber chassis. That's right. And Some people Kevin, starting to see a theme here. Kevin Jones, Ultra Four Jones, uh, right in right seat. So uh, we talked about their journey, Aaron's journey, the hammers, and meeting Kevin, and how that all went about. So it's a cool story, and. Uh, I'm I'm glad we sat down with them and, oh, and yeah. got this in the can, so to speak. Yep, yep, yep. You want to hear it? Let's uh, let's Lorenzo? roll. It. Yeah. All right, let's do it. All right, Chris. Here we are, post Koh Blues, PPD, PPD. Yes, and uh, Lorenzo, he had a, a nice uh, vacuum bath today. He got he got all cleaned up. Oh boy, he's ready for this podcast. Is he? Yeah, he's he's actually happy to be back home. He he was he had a good koh, but not a great koh. Well, he uh, he oh, it looks like he got a hoof cure. He did. He got, got a hoof cure. <laughs> okay, that's. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. I got to give you credit on that. When you're not drinking, you're drinking water. So I got to, you're, you're, you're spry right now. Two week dry period. That's it. Good. Every year after KOH. Really? Two, weeks. Oh, yeah. two weeks. Oh yeah. Holy smokes. That's awesome. Um, but Hey, we, we had to circle back with a, a couple of our friends here on the podcast. Uh, yeah. One of them, um, I don't know if has been on the podcast before. Um, we, we know of him. Um, but, uh, Ultra Four Jones? Oh yeah, I've heard of him. You've heard of him, right? Like, he's, like he's on the social medias and stuff, yeah, and he's he, out there. He gets around. And then uh, Aaron Smith, uh, AA Ron, uh, driving a bomber chassis that he uh, put together for Koh, and he Ooh. was the only, only, I underscore the third time only rookie to finish, and the 4400 class so awesome. kevin kevin jones ultra four jones and a a ron welcome to the podcast how you guys doing good thanks guys yeah good to be good to be back home out of the dust i'll tell you that <laughs> <laughs> no kidding huh yeah. you know it's sad leaving and driving boone road and you're like f boone road but we actually had rain so we had zero dust oh, going was, back out uh, it was weird nice. it was weird on on monday morning it was it was uh, pretty surreal and quiet and um it was nice. It was actually civilized. <laughs> there were very, the place emptied out pretty fast. It I gotta was, say. it was impressive. But, uh, you know, once I pulled up back home and took a real long hot shower and, uh, slipped into my bed, I was like, it's good to be back home. It's, it was a long trip, but it was, it was totally worth it. Yeah. So, got to see a lot of old friends and, and new friends and, and it's obviously running into Kevin Jones, and I'd never actually ran into Aaron on the lake bed you for didn't? whatever reason. But uh, you guys, no, never I kept looking. No, not, I, not face uh, to face. I kept looking for the voice. I could never. You gotta find be him. kidding me. How many? <laughs> oh my god! I was in the pit several times. Okay, well, I was doing my own thing a lot of the time. Right, right. Anyway. You were babysitting Lorenzo. Right. 
So, uh, Aaron, you're in Texas right now, and the uh, rest of us are in California, A. So, um, yeah, we wanted to get you guys on the podcast and talk about how this whole relationship started and, um, you know, leading up to KOH and then the actual race of KOH. Um, so let, let's just dive right in, shall we? What, Aaron, go ahead. Take it away of, like, what gave you the idea of, I want to go race the world's toughest one day off road race. Right. What what kind of state were you in? Were you at your all time low and go? This sounds like a good idea. <laughs> well, I mean, it started it started actually several years ago. Kind of funny. It, I have I've had plenty of buggies over the years, um, but I kind of was at the end of my last buggy. It was a like an, an FJ Cruiser, like a late model one. We had one ton swapped it. We had LS swapped it. We drove it for years and years. The body was a raisin, you know, the, the typical raisin buggy. Um, okay. Yeah. And it's some, it's, yeah. yeah, the raisin Toyota. <laughs> and I, I love the buggy. It did great. It was super heavy and it had no visibility. And it finally kind of got towards the end of its lifespan where I really was looking for something smaller, more compact, just a trail buggy though. And I was like, I had this great idea. I was like, man, I'll just take all this sweet drive train that I already got in my buggy and I'll put it in a chassis. So Facebook marketplace later, you know, I find a chassis Uh down in Austin. Um, It was a bomber chassis. The guy had already welded it up, but he didn't have all of it. You know, you you can buy them in separate kind of pieces and it was missing the lace up kit. That's what it was missing. So it was a good deal. I wound up getting on the phone with Randy down at Bomber Fab, and I said, hey, man, what's it going to take nice. to get the lace-up kit? There's one local to me. Um, I want to go pick it up, and can you send me a lace-up kit? He said, man, how? What is it welded together? I said, yeah. And that's when he said, oh, don't buy it. You know, The lace-up kit oh, has to be welded up with the chassis. You know, So that's when... So when you refer to the lace-up kit, what is that? Just all the extra that? tube work in right. between. Basically, the difference between like the you know, like the trail version and maybe, you know, the race version, mm-hmm. obviously the race, the race oh, version. Is, okay. has, it so has it, was a, it was a trail bomber. Yeah, basically that needed. Yeah. Okay. It was a full size race car, it a... but it didn't have all the extra tubing supports t- to make it a race. Got car. it. So got anyways, it. the conversation okay. goes further and he's like, well, I had a guy who was going to come get one. It's tacked up. I'm about to leave for hammers. And I mean, this is like two months before hammers. I guess Randy goes out there way early. So, he yeah, goes he goes out there a lot. lot. Yeah. He's like, I'll make you a deal on this one. You just got to come down and get it before I get out of town. Well, next thing I know, I'm burning and okay. turning down to Gardnerville, Nevada. I'm picking up this chassis that's all tacked up. I have no clue what I'm getting myself into. And I bring it back to Texas. And then I start realizing that oh, wow. KOH is you know, a couple weeks away. I'm like, well, I got this chassis. I might as well go and see what one looks like in real life. So we went to Hammers. And, uh, you know, of course, we made the mistake of – jumping in the car with Randy and then, you know, the rest is, the rest <laughs> is history was, after that, you know, as they say, so this was last year, 2022, this was right. This, or this 21 is 21 hammers. hammers. So okay. he, two years ago. So yeah, two, so two years, years ago. ago. So he pulls his car out of the trailer. He's like, yeah, you want to go for a ride? I was like, sure. And he's like, you got a helmet or anything? I'm like, dude, no, we don't, we don't do that back at home. Like, so we, so I borrowed one <laughs> from some random person. I don't know where I got it from. And we went for a ride and then that's when it kind of hit me. I was like, I remember telling him in the car, I was like, we jumped over like this hill on the backside of something. Don't even know the trail name. And I'm like, Randy, I'm breaking up with my girlfriend and I'm eating ramen noodles for the next year. (laughs) And sure enough, I didn't break up with the girlfriend, but I did eat ramen noodles for a year. And uh, we spectated. Of course, he won that year. So then I was just like even more, even more into it. So then it Then it came down to, all right, well, now I'm just going to completely part my buggy out because the plan was just to move everything from my trail buggy into this and just have a trail car. No, not anymore. Sold my trailer and sold all my buggy parts and sold some motorcycles I had and, you know, laid it down for the next, I don't know, year and a half or so, just saving money and buying parts and looking at them every day in the corner of the shop and crying a little bit and dreaming of the day that i'd get a chance to build it so wow so that that's i mean talk about i mean kind of the circumstances there right that you just laid out it's like okay there's this bomber car for sale you call up 
the guy that built it, Randy Slauson, and goes, mm, no, I wouldn't get that, but I yeah. got one for you. And you go and meet, you know, three-time king or two-time king at that point. Right. Um, and, and uh, you know, Randy's a cool cat. You just, he, he's very stoic and he's got, you know, it's like, he's intimidating when you first meet him, right? It's like, dude, you got this pedigree and then you meet him and he's just, he's, he's just... Yeah. Cool. Us. Yeah. I mean, yeah, exactly. Well, and then when you, cooler than us, but well, yeah, us. way cooler than us, <laughs> not as cool as Lorenzo, but cooler than us. Um, but yeah. And then to go out and, and Hey, hop in the car. Let me take you for a ride. I mean, that's, that's so freaking yeah. great. It's marketing. Oh, dude, he knew right exactly there. what he was doing. I, I need to take, I need to take <laughs> notes on that one. I'll have to use that in the future. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so great. So now you got this this bomber chassis sitting in your garage, and you're like, okay, I'm racing KOH and start acquiring parts right. and parts and parts and eating top ramen to afford all the parts. And um, you 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 start, you know, you put out some IGs and stuff, and you get this car assembled yeah. uh, to a point, and you're like, okay, I'm gonna race. 2023. So KOH. it actually started yeah. with, and I'm going to sign up for the. It started oh, with go 22. Ahead. So the plan was to okay. race 22. So I, I had put myself off of work for like a month and a half or so because I had enough parts, and I was like, I can do this. I'm going to finish it, and I'm going to go straight and wow. race 22. I was two weeks too late. It was the best thing that ever happened to me, though, because the car was not ready. Mm. It had just gotten built. New car yeah. blues, all that kind of stuff. There's no way. I would have been the guy who would have finished five miles in. It would have been, you know, it would have been done. So I yeah. missed it, but I still, yeah, yeah we've but seen that. But I still that. wound up going out there because I had the time off of work. So I went out there two weeks later. You know, I did some shock tuning. I did some engine tuning down there. Got the car kind of, you know, together. Um more running. And then while I'm out there, this is kind of a weird time. It's when, uh, like the Robinettes had kind of taken over ultra four. It was like right at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Uh So I'm in California with the car, everything's starting to dial up. I'm out there for a week and a half. And I always, I start seeing these posts and my buddies start sending them to me like, Hey man, they're doing this nine one eight race. It's in, it's in Oklahoma. It's going to be the first race of the season. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking in my head, I'm like, well, my car's ready to go. Let's, let's, let's haul back to Texas. We'll do a few nut and bolt checks and we'll drive right up to Oklahoma and we'll go do this race. And then there was kind of like a little snow apocalypse thing. And then the race got postponed and then it wound up being like the next weekend. Anyways, we went out and we, we pulled a fourth place finish at that race. Yeah. First oh, one. So that was, wow. that was really cool. Wow. Right on. That is cool. So what kind of driving experience do you have other than just recreational wheeling? That's it. Just rec wheeling. Re- <laughs> that's it. He's all, that's it. That's all I got. Rec wheeling, rec wheeling back at home, getting kicked out of all the local parks for going too fast. That's about my experience. Yeah. yeah. So you like speed. Yeah. But we have a lot of trees okay. out here, man. You can't right. get going too fast. Y- yeah. I was going to say, you got, you got a lot of dodging yeah. to do. <laughs> Sure. So you didn't do the you didn't do the dirt bike thing like Kevin. Uh, Jones when did I was younger, anything? I had like just, you, you know I had little dirt wheels. bikes and street bikes and you know motorcycles and stuff, but never like competitive or anything like that. More for, more for fun. No three wheelers. And we don't have those out here. You no, you see. Oh, you don't. I went to a three wheeler thing the other night. It was insane. I can't imagine if if I would have had one. Yeah, of those kid, that, I wouldn't be alive right now. I'll tell you that. <laughs> you wouldn't be alive. To, you wouldn't be <laughs> no. talking to us right now. I know. That's my, right. Myself included. That yeah. Those were those were danger. Will Robinson, man. Those things yeah. were crazy. Oh they my. Sure were. So okay. So um, you go through that race, and then it's like now you're focusing on Koh twenty twenty three. Focused on the season. Um, so then I decide. Oh, okay, East nice. Coast, East Coast season. We're gonna do this. So my, I set out my goal of like, I'm going to race every race East coast this season. And then I'm going to go to KOH. So, you know, I think okay. we got five races in this year and, uh, man, I tell you what, it's a struggle. Like, you know, having the time to work, come home, work, go work on your car, you know, save up the money, work on your car, right. get on the road, drive out to the race, you know, don't really spend any time out there. Like as far as pre-running and stuff, like show up enough for the race, race, turn back home. Got to go make money and do it again. So 
we yeah. uh, we got through five races and that's when i really started honing in the car and dialing things in every time we got back it was like okay well i have a problem with this let me address that and we'll do that we'll see how it goes for the next race so we just kept making improvements every time so going into koh i felt a little bit better about the car yeah, that's good. So you you you, you didn't come no. in cold. I mean, that I I didn't realize you had done all that prior yeah. too. So you got to shake down the car, get oh, rid of the new yeah. car blues. I yeah, I got quite a bit of yeah, seat time. and seat yeah. time over Enough everything. Enough time to break that, a lot of things and fix mischief. them, <laughs> and break them again and fix them yeah. to know what breaks and how to fix it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Because it was it was interesting. I mean, I've I've been around this stuff for a little bit now, and obviously, I don't race, never race, never want to race. But um, I can key in when I walked into your pit the first time. You were calm, cool, collected, and uh, I was like, "Dude, this guy never been at Koh before. Does he know what he's yeah. getting himself into?" You know. Yeah, um, like it. But it's super cool to hear this backstory um, that I didn't yeah. know. So right. uh, that makes sense now. Yeah, it wasn't um, as that this wasn't your first rodeo. It wasn't as cool and se. collective <laughs> as you think because a week before you probably came by our pit, it was a bare chassis here in Texas. I had, I had a lot of yeah, trouble, no, more trouble than normal. You know, as, as my ha- my hammers prep went, and uh, we were waiting on a lot of parts. We call it hashtag KOH prep here on oh, the uh, well, podcast. Kevin, I hashtag the heck out of that thing. <laughs> Kevin just went a little cross-eyed. For <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, your car was like I, I was following your your IG, and I was like, "Holy smokes, is this guy going to make it? Is is Kevin going to have a right seat? What's happening with this whole right. you know ordeal?" And um, man, I okay, so. So let's talk about you and Kevin um, meeting and making this happen as a, as a right seat uh, for him uh, or wrong seat, as some sure. people say. I don't know. but uh, So that but first Hammers yeah. I went to, 21, as a spectator, I don't know. Actually, I scrolled back and found it. After I talked to Kevin for a while about going with me, I looked back and in, originally he had messaged me about like some perforated metal or something that I was using on my build. That's how the conversation started. Okay. So then of course I started following him and then we, you know, kind of chatted back and forth together for a while. And then I went to 21 and I think I want to say he was shock tuning or taking his shocks off. And I walked up to him. I'm like, Hey, yep. you're ultra four Jones. Like I followed you. Like we've talked a couple of times. And of course he was like elbows deep pulling shocks off, doing all kinds of stuff. We barely, barely chatted. Sure. No, of course he said, well, yeah, and I next am. thing I know, he added. He, I remember he gave me like a sticker, and I don't know, maybe like a T-shirt or something. And I was like, okay, this guy's cool. So we, you know, as a spectator, it's like, He's okay, dab my beer, walk around, talk to the next guy, kind of deal. You know, sure. I didn't have anything to wheel, sure. so yeah. Um, yeah, we kind of just stayed in touch for you know like the two years in between, and I mean, I'd followed him a bunch, and then like I wasn't sure I was going to Hammers at all because. I didn't have a motor until like three days before I left. I had no, I didn't, yeah, I didn't even have what? diffs. I didn't have a motor. Like, I guess in my prep, it was Christmas night, actually. I was like, all right, I've got, Man, you know, no, no, it wasn't you. Christmas night. That's not when I got the motor. <laughs> that's when I found out. That's when I found out. I, I was like, I was sitting there. I was like, you know what? I'm going to change my oil. Like, that's just something I can knock off the list real quick. You know, we had family stuff to do. I was like, I'm going to just change oil. And that's when I found out, oh, man. I messed this motor up at the last race. I, it was running fine. I didn't know. Disney, we took on some water, been a rod, had no idea. And that's when I was like crushed. And anyways, I chipped mm. the motor off right then, got it back last minute, put the car together. And that's when I messaged Kevin. I was like, hey, I just got tracking that my motor's coming back. Like being in Texas, things are a lot different. Like you guys have it lucky. Mm-hmm. Like my trans guys out there, my motor guys out there, my engine tuners out there. A lot of the parts that I, we get, they're all out there. Like I, I was blown away at how easy it is to get things there where here it's like, Oh, your motor's ready, but it'll, it'll be a week before you can get it. You know? So yeah. I get tracking and I'm yeah. like all excited. I'm like, well, I don't have anyone to drive with me. And then I've been following Kevin for a while. And I noticed that he was riding in a bomber with Eric. And I was like, well, okay that would be a really cool guy to do it. But you know, he's already taken, you know, and then I kind of was just like, well, I'm just going to have to throw one of my buddies in, you know? And then I, I finally, I saw a Mm -hmm. post. It was the, you know, devastating Eric Wicks, poor guy post. 
you know, yeah, just like they were out there prepping, so like everything was ready. The car was dialed and I've met him out there before. I even met him at, uh, him and mm-hmm. his, him and his brother and, uh, and Justin out at Disney again for the second time. So okay. we got to, yeah, yeah them and all the Rufus guys, you know, we, you know, we'd all hung out out there a little bit and I seen that post and I was like, I'm going to hit him up and see what he says. And we get to talking a little bit and I sent him a picture of the car and it was kind of like, yeah, dude, I'll ride with you. But you know, it's a bare chassis. You're supposed to leave in a week. There's no way. And, uh, I'm pretty sure the conversation <laughs> ended. I'm pretty sure the conversation <laughs> between us ended. If you can send me a video of it doing a burnout, you know, I'm in. So three, four days later, <laughs> I'm sending him a video of it, just ripping down the highway, you know, like, let's go. Are you ready? Ooh. Let's do this. So that's kind of how that got going. That, yeah, <laughs> that's crazy. I mean, an unfortunate turn of events. Uh, I was super excited. Um, you know, Eric's co-driver, his name was Kevin as, as well up in Truckee that, that said, Hey, I'm not, I'm not going to be able to co-drive with you this year. Uh, you know, I'll support the team, but I, 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 I can't co-drive. And so then uh, Eric calls me up. And he's like, who, you know, I need to write. Yeah. Seat. Someone was like, familiar with the land. I offered you know? Chris up, but uh, you know, that's the yeah, hardest right? thing. Like, I don't know. It, I don't know where so, anything is out there. I have no clue. <laughs> so, so I thought about it for a split second, and it, it quickly diminished because there's no way I would be able to to tolerate that uh, abuse for you know eight hours, and then. Um, you know, nor do I know the desert like you're talking about. And then uh, when I heard uh, Kevin Jones thrown into the mix, I was like, oh, my God, this is Perfect so fit. good. I love this. I know both of these guys really well. I'm excited for, for both of them. And then uh, poor Eric, you know, rips his freaking rotator cup. And uh, it, it was actually more involved. I don't I don't it. it I just talked to I've been talking to um Eric here last few days and um, it was a major surgery, but he's got everything fixed up and he's in mm. the repair process now. So, um, yeah. And then, um, you know, and then this came up, it was like, Oh my gosh, this, this is cool. Uh, Kevin gets a right seat in a 4,400 car again, another second chance, if you will. Yeah. And then, so, uh, Kevin jump on in. I know you haven't, you're, you're not familiar with this podcast thing. Relax, take a deep breath because, uh, you know, you've never been on podcast before. So I want, I want you to ease into this. Um, you know, so, uh, go ahead, Kevin. I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm Welcome not sure podcast. what. I'm not sure what to do with my hands. <laughs> what to do with my hands? It's not a visual thing, so yeah. you're good. Oh, you're okay. good. Right. You can do whatever you want with your hands. Uh, no, no, no not that. I no, don't okay. want to see it. <laughs> Lorenzo, stop sweet talking to him in his earmuffs. There. <laughs> oh shoot. Uh, okay, so your forty first time on this podcast. Go ahead, Kevin. I think I've got Amber beat now, right? You do. I think right. you do. Good. We need to get an official tally. Lorenzo oh. needs to get on that and get an official tally between you and Amber to see who's been on the podcast more. Right. It, it could be like the uh, the Dave Cole versus Terry Madden meme, you know? Like, oh, like who's got who's got the most count? You know, chaos. Man, just, <laughs> Amber, Amber versus ass, Amber man. versus Kevin. You know, like right in there. <laughs> I like it. Um, I like it. I no, like Aaron, it a lot. Aaron, Aaron nailed it. He. He's he's telling a great story. I, I just wanted to let him run with it. No, super good. So so you get the phone call or DM. What, 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 what yeah, I mean, so there, there's even a little piece of that story that. So he mentioned a year ago he almost made it. Uh-huh. He saw he saw that I was right seating with Lesage in UTV, and he called me. I, I just went back through the messages while he was telling the story, and and I found okay. it. It was like January seventeenth, twenty twenty two. He DM'd and said, like, hey, you got a minute. And he sent me his phone number. And I remember standing in my driveway having this phone conversation. He's like, I'm going for it. Like, I'm trying to get this car done. And he's like, if I'm crazy enough to show up with a car, will you get in it with me? And I'm thinking, like, dude, I met this guy a year ago. And we talked for, like, three minutes. Right. And I'm like, yeah, sure, man. Let's do it. And uh, (laughs) the plan was... After the UTV race, I would have been familiar with the course. And, you know, if he just wanted to check something off his bucket list and show up and take the green flag, like, yeah. And I think we even had a conversation about, like, it's a horrible idea. You'll DNF. Like, it, it's not going to work well. Wow. And, and I think to his benefit, like, the car didn't get done until two weeks later. So 
that worked out really well and, and all the lessons he learned. But then fast forward a year now. So Eric posts the, you know, I, I'm out post. Eric right. calls Eric calls me 10 minutes later and is like, Hey man, I, you know, can I, can we do this? And I, I thought, shoot, yeah, let's, this is perfect. And I, I've been watching him now race all the regionals. I've been watching all the ultra four live feeds and I've been seeing him race and finish. And I know he's entered five races and finished five races and he's broken the car and fixed the car. And I'm thinking, man, this is the perfect recipe. Now the guy has worked out the new car blues. He knows what it takes to cross the finish line. He knows what the car can tolerate and what it can't tolerate. Uh, I'm like, he's, he's got everything he needs to make, you know, a successful run at KOH. So yeah, I was, you know, this time I was, I was genuinely excited that, it, it, that Aaron's the right guy to get to get the car with, you know. You couldn't and, see it, but Aaron just took a heavy, heavy sway straight from the bottom. Oh, did he really? <laughs> yeah, he he yeah. polished yeah. off. Yeah, he polished off the rod yeah. hammer in the background there. Oh, it's just awesome. such a thumb. I was trying to keep a straight face. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to, uh, I'll have to mail you another one. Uh, so yeah, I mean. Address? Yeah, we we wheeling wine and whiskey. <laughs> you guys can buy it at Rayleigh's. You guys can just what, go to Rayleigh's. But not with and pick the Ultra Four logo on it. I, mean, I know that was that was limited edition. K- Koh finisher <laughs> <Yeah>. stash. <laughs> uh, super cool. I'm, I'm definitely saving the bottle. That's pretty cool. Nice. That, yeah, yeah. yeah put course. it put it on the shelf in the shop or something. Yeah, sign it. Yeah, <laughs> that'll be good. We so yeah, it worked out. Too. It worked out way better this time, and that you know it was right for both of us, and that. Uh, you know, we'd known a little bit more about each other. And like you said, we've, we've been going back and forth. He's been helping me a ton, answering little questions while I build my car and giving me his two cents on things he learned while he built his car. And so, you know, even though we hadn't really spent more time together in person, I I feel like we knew a little bit more about each other since that first, you know, quick uh, exchange at at KOH 21. It it just, it blows me away this day and age that we're in that, you know, no internet. You guys would have never met. This never would have happened. No, right? No I way. mean, it's just crazy. Yep. Yep. It's it's just it. It's. I mean, as as you know, there's there's pluses and minuses, obviously, of this whole internet BS. But well, I mean, Al this Gore this is people together, man. This is a positive. <laughs> this is a positive, and it's super cool to hear this story of just like you know, simple little you know, social media, IG post, whatever. And, um, you guys start following each other and you meet up at KOH and then a year later you're in a car together racing and finish the freaking race. I mean, that, that's a Cinderella story right there. It's still, it's still, I can't even believe it. I mean, it's only, it's only been a few days, really. I mean, what a week, right. From today. A week, a week ago. Yeah, today. a week, a week. We are recording one week yeah. later, right now. Um, so it's four o'clock uh, our time. So right so, now, our uh, backs. Let's see. You guys cross the finish line shape right now. By the end of this podcast, our backs are completely <laughs> broken, and we're hating life. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I'm like, I'm moving my head around, thinking, yeah, I still have some neck pain. Like it's still there. A week later, Jesus. you know, wow. it's real. So. So, okay, so you guys, you say, okay, we're doing this, and um, I'm sure there's a lot of phone conversations, whatever, prior to the race of, of you know, coordinating and all that stuff, and um, you guys arrived on the lake bed pretty much the same time? Yeah, I think I think my favorite part of all this is, like, so he sends me that video of the car running, and I'm like, cool, so do I sign up now, like? am i your official co-driver <laughs> like official? do we do we do this like is it is it happening and he goes i'm not registered yet and i'm driving all the way to california and i'm still not going to register until i get a clean bill of health from josh west on the dyno yeah because it was a, oh, it was wow. a brand new motor so, like it it had two miles okay on it. so i was like i need oh, to make geez. sure this is right because obviously entry fees insurance all the tracker it's pretty expensive it's expensive to it's go expensive. all the way out there and then be like oh hey man by the way, this new motor is no good. Um, you can you can right. you can drive back to Texas now, you know. But but yeah, and 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 to that point, I mean, I don't know why if I know more people or what, but I have heard so many motor issues and transmission issues this KOH mm-hmm. more than ever, 
And it's like you buy, a, let's just say, $20,000 race motor. It, it's like, well, that sucker better freaking be the best freaking motor I've ever driven. But, I mean, there's problems, whatever. You know, this this is racing, this is KOH, but... I was just amazed at how Multiple many people motors. were doing. I mean, people look at Waylon Campbell. You know, go. Did he go to Gilbert, Arizona, twice so. with motor issues? Yeah. Twice, twice from the lake bed, and and then Bailey had uh, motor issues as well. And then you know, you just go down. Rufus had a a motor issue. They had put a new motor and tranny in. Well, that's, I, that's I mean, it was just insane. It's interesting to think. I mean, is it a supply chain thing? Is it a quality of labor thing? Is if it wasn't know. hammers, they wouldn't have a problem. A shortage of labor. <laughs> I'll tell you right. right? <laughs> uh, Kevin, Kevin told me about uh, it. It's just that if it wasn't hammers. Everyone's motor would run perfect. Their transmissions would be perfect. They'd yeah. be on the. They'd go pre-run. They'd qualify. They wouldn't have to turn a wrench. But it's hammers. It doesn't work like that. Yeah, it's hammers. That's it's special. It, it, it is. <laughs> it, it is special. Well, that's the w- w- world's uh, hardest one day race. I yeah. Mean, come on. I mean, I get that, but at the same time, looking at it from a different perspective, I mean, I'm not an engine builder. I'm not, you know, any, anywhere near qualified to to do stuff like that. But you got to think that all this nonsense about you know supply chain shortages, you know, problems getting parts for internal components for an engine, or maybe some stuff is sneaking through that may not be you know as good as it could be from the from the yeah. from the pit rod maker, piston maker, you know, camshaft maker, spring makers. Who knows? Because I mean, everybody, nobody ball bearings. Ball don't forget about ball bearings. It's all about ball bearings these so, days. I mean, is there? I mean, one small. <laughs> component can completely yeah. crash your engine a push rod i mean whatever, that's the thing you, you know? can you can have a fifty thousand dollar motor but there. a five dollar bearing could be the end of it it's it's, it's pretty wild yeah. there's a lot of moving yeah. components exactly. yeah yeah it, it is so um no i i get it i mean because you know i follow a lot of these racers and and you know you don't i mean most of Ninety eight percent of the people on that lake bed don't have unlimited budgets, you know. No. And it's like you're you're fighting tooth and nail to make sure everything's okay and and doing everything you can. And yeah, everybody wants the the top dollar stuff, but you can't afford it. And it's like, man. Uh, so I get coming to the lake bed and going, okay, I got to make sure this is okay before I drop. What is it like thirty five hundred bucks or something to yeah, register it was, for it was the thirty five hundred? But then by the time you add the tracker, the GPS deal, I mean it was a little over four grand, something like that. You know, it's pretty pretty expensive. So f- four four wow. k just yeah. to get to the starting line, just to say, okay, I'm going to race. Yeah, no garage, no pits. No, I mean, no. the fuel, you know, diesel is a huge deal from you know. You guys, you guys are close. Like just oh, easily yeah. truck and trailer and back is, you know, and then race car fuel and food and you know we were out there for you know we left we were gone for a solid three weeks. You know, um, I mean I've got my own yeah. shop here in in it, Carrollton, north of Dallas, and you know if I'm gone for three weeks, you know the bills still keep coming in. I'm not. I yeah I mean, the bills come no, in. No, the I'm bills not come in, but you're not you know? producing. So yeah, yeah you're not billing combat. I mean, yeah, it's 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 a major undertaking, and I, I know our listeners understand, but you start putting dollars to that, and I mean, I was talking to a racer yesterday here from California, and he said, I spent 15 grand just to get to the lake bed, just to get it. to the lake bed, and like you're talking about, right, all the logistics, his team, blah, 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 and he's, yep. you know, and, and then, then it's the cost of... Not that's not including the car, and if anything breaks while right. you're there on the that's, lake bed, right. and reg- you know, it's like, holy crap! I mean, it's yeah. it's a commitment. Once, it's it's a bucket list thing. It's super cool, but holy crap! There's some serious the big dollars things, involved. Once you're, well, and the difference between some. Teams, I said once you're there, you're you're obligated and forced to. I mean, depending on how you're. Oh your, yeah. You know what your goal is. It's like once you put the money down to do everything and be there and the whole, just the whole bowl of everything. If something goes wrong, we're normally at back at home. You're just trail around your buddies. Oh man, we broke an axle shaft. You know, we'll just hang out for the night and we're just pack up and go home. It's like, no, you got to go find and buy another right. axle shaft. Right. You don't have a choice. You're too, yeah, you're too you invested. You're committed. Send some, some of your teammates. 
Yeah. Yeah. One of your teammate might need to go to San Diego or, or, you know, just down to Mexico. I mean, we, we've heard about teams that, that sent drivers all over Southern California and yeah, I think even into Baja or Mexico to find parts. What for do you the do in side. Mexico? Who's getting, Oh, that was last year. Yeah. That was last that year. That was last year. <laughs> when, uh, when, uh, what's his name? Jay Barry. Yeah. Was looking for he had parts to go to Mexico. Side side. <laughs> so, I, mean, I might've had to draw what I'm the saying. line there. The, the committed teams, one, but, you know, right. <laughs> right. When you got to cross the border to get well, parts. Lore- he wanted to take Lorenzo. to <laughs> he, translate, Yeah. Lorenzo, but. Lorenzo uh, <laughs> took him to a donkey show or something. I don't know. We don't need to get into that, but, but that's that's what the the make or break or where the commitment is really proven is that you you know it's like hey I need a transmission or a bell housing or God knows what and and that part is three and a half hours away you uh, go yeah you make it happen go right now and bam you do it so wow okay so so um, Ultra Four Jones you, you yes. get this call you're you're on the lake bed and um, I gotta say you were like you know just like having a ball man i've never seen you so calm cool and collected it was like you were in your element and you know obviously you had skin in the game but you were you know you you didn't have a race car there which sucked but um you were super into this whole operation with aaron and every time i went into the pits it was it was there was a good there was a good cohesiveness that I felt between you two and, and you guys obviously didn't know each other that well, but I felt like you guys knew each other forever. I mean, am I off base here or what? No, I, I think you're, you're pretty spot on. I mean, we're, we're different in a lot of ways, but then I think there's, there's things that, that make us very similar. Like Aaron's super meticulous about his, his car build and his assembly and all that. And I told him right away, I was like, Hey man, you should be the only one that touches your car, like period. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I'm going to do things that I feel like a navigator should do. I'm going to work on the GPS and I'm going to think about logistical concerns and fuel mileage and, and stuff like that. I'm not going to, as much as I love to turn wrenches, like I'm not going to jump in because I can tell you're a guy that likes to work by yourself on your own yeah. car, do it your way. Like all the things that, that I'm exactly the same about, but uh, on the flip side, like, the stuff that I get anxiety about and I get worked up about, like Aaron's cool as a cucumber, like doesn't get phased. Um, you know, he, he didn't sweat qualifying at all, but it's like, that's the most nerve wracking thing that takes place. Mm -hmm. The whole two weeks for me is qualifying because I've seen it pay off and I've seen it just absolutely destroy. So, you know, I, I just want qualifying to, to, be done with you know and and aaron's like he's like man what is up with you you know and i was just like i it's just i I know what's on the line you know and and it's hard for me to to kind of shake that like race day i i like race day i I feel good about that but no and and his camp like everybody in his pit all all the people i got to meet troy and luke and uh his girlfriend and everybody's girlfriends and and garrett and mike and all these dudes they're they're so they're such good people everybody had such a good attitude, such a good work ethic. You know, they're all friends because of different reasons, but it was like, I felt the whole That's time cool. I, I felt super privileged and super honored to even just be like around them because they were all just really good people with, with really good hearts. And uh, it, it, it was a really fun camp to be a part of. It, it was every time I walked in, I mean, there was no chaos and it was like, and you had three teams pitting out of there. Yeah. And I was like, you know, it, it wasn't because I've gone into some pits and it's like, okay, I'm not going to go come <laughs> yeah. back and tell things There's calm no down yelling, or whatever, no right? Yelling, you know? Hollering us, of us yeah. Having a good time. Yeah. Right. It, it yeah. was cool. You guys, uh, you know, it was it was super organized and, and cool. And uh, yeah, great vibe every time I came into that pit. So I was like... Oh, these guys are dialed, man. They're they're having fun. They're gonna make this happen, and, and and that's like you know most pits, but some pits are I've walked into, and it's like oh my gosh, and, okay, and I'm gonna our, step back now. Deal, the um, only reason we all know each other is from racing, so we've all yeah. So Troy, really? I met him at a national race. Troy's Digby, forty five hundred. Troy bid Digby, and then you got uh-huh. Tom um, yep. in a stock class, and we've. Who's sponsored yeah. by Irate, so, Chris? 
Yeah. We've Austin only met I each race. other. We've never met outside of not being at a race. So we all kind of collectively at each race mm-hmm. we go to, like everyone's got these grand setups and all this, you know, big teams and stuff. And, you know, most of the races throughout the season, it's, you know, it's me, my girlfriend, my dog, that's who shows up. And then Troy brings him and his co-driver. Yeah. And then Tom usually brings him and his wife and his son. And so it's just kind of, we all bring our own stuff out and, you know, we've kind of each race kind of refined it where we're all together. Um, we just, as soon as we get going, race day's coming up. We're like, Hey, you go into that one. Okay. All right. Well, we'll meet you there and kind of just combine efforts. You know, we That's all cool. live all over the place. Oh, Tom wow. is out of Colorado. I'm out of Texas. Uh, Troy's out of North Carolina. So we're all over the, you know, the country oh, basically, wow. but every once, every month and a half, we get to yeah, meet up yeah. and hang out and go racing. That's cool. That's cool. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. So, um, were you in the right seat during qualifying, Kevin? Yeah, because, so I think if it had been a short course qualifying, I I would have sat out and told Aaron to just, you know, hammer down and have a good time and not Mm -hmm. worry about, you know, somebody else's safety in the car. But because they were doing the chocolate thunder qualifying, there was, you know, a touch of concern, not so much in a 4,400 car, but there was a touch of concern that, there could be a need to winch and okay. the, the plan of amongst all teams from UTV all the way to 4,400 was if you ha- if you got bound up or things went wrong and you had to winch co-driver can jump out, hook up the winch cable, get the car over the boulders, mm-hmm. disconnect the winch cable, toss it in the window and then wish the driver luck and they could just peel out without them. And yeah. I know, you know, some of the teams had to do that, but, uh, we obviously didn't have to do that. So yeah, long, long story short, I was, I was in the car for qualifying. Okay. And, and what'd you qualify? Uh, I think it wound up being 60th. What position? So not way okay. up there. All not right. yeah, so not in the, the middle of the pack, yeah. a little ahead of but the middle we, of the we pack. We discussed it. That's where we wanted to be. But yeah, we want to be right in the middle. We, we talked okay. about it. Okay. And it's, yeah, it's not, that's not even a, I, I'm sure somebody listening is like, oh, sure. Yeah, that's what you wanted. But like, yeah. there was a, there was a, <laughs> there was literally a financial reason to, to do it that way as well. I mean, there, there were, there was a game plan and, and there were a lot of reasons, but um, Aaron can probably explain some of the Yeah. So uh, okay. one of the cool things about the rookie program that was this year was that if you finished qualifying in 4,400, not the other classes, they had to, I think, finish, but in 4,400, if you qualified, you got your entry fee back. So that 35, so that 35, if you qualified, you got your entry fee. We got it back. So yeah, it's huge. So to go out there, to go out there and try to get a fifth place qualifying, roll the car, break it, not finish. You don't get your entry fee back. And then, and then you're working on the car all night, the next couple nights, trying to get it together. And you know, you have the possibility of damaging parts that you didn't know you damaged. And then you go to race day and you're five sure. miles in. And it's like, well, that stress crack that we put on the transmission. Now it's, now it's, you know, now, it, now we see it. Um, our goal was just to go yeah. in and take it easy. I mean, we even have a video at the very end. We were, we were going for a Saturday morning cruise, you know, cruise with the boys. Cruise, you know, just, yeah. we, just, we went out <laughs> trail ride, the trail ride trail mentality ride. and I think it really paid off. Wow. Okay. That's, that's awesome. So, I like it. Chris has a question. So, yeah, I mean, we just talked about your strategy there for qualifying. And I mean, it's, it's interesting to hear that because I mean, looking at, at, uh, some other people that, that qualified or we talk about mechanical sympathy all the time. And one of the, it wasn't a qualifying issue, but Paul Wolf, you know, ran his 4,400 car in the sure, shootout and he won. on a Tuesday night. <laughs> and then obviously, and he, no and surprise he won. There. but you know, I mean, this is the uh, right, right. But I mean, and then he went into the into the Saturday main main event, you know, with a car that that may have taken some hits or whatever during the shootout that weren't necessarily yeah. necessary <laughs> to to be a little redundant with my I don't words. Know if that's but, what took it out, but, but uh, there's a I mean, possibility, you know. Well, but you know, yeah, exactly. And I mean, I, I'm kind of. I don't know where I'm trying to go with this, but it's like just take care of your <laughs> take care of your junk because you you yeah, know it's gonna sure. it, you need it on race day uh, rather than I don't I don't know maybe yeah, yeah. not beat it up during qualifying yeah. but I, get a good position in qualifying. I have this whole you know Aaron and I talked about this a lot and uh, 
Yeah, mechanical sympathy we talk about a lot. I'm a big proponent of that. But the the other term I, I've been using a lot this KOH is is mortally wounded. And by that, I mean how many cars looked good or looked cool in qualifying, but they they were mortally wounded because of their aggression, but they uh-huh. just didn't know it yet. So they hit the race, they green flag, they're bouncing through the desert, and next thing you know... The torque converter bolt shear, the transmission output shaft breaks in half, the teeth break off the ring gear, mm-hmm. you know, and and you're blaming the race for that, but actually you did that damage because you drove like an animal in qualifying, and and I I think that happens more than than people think it does uh, <laughs> I because think right I mean, because like to watch it. So if you've got a program like Jason Shear and you qualify yeah. hard, just gonna say. Your car goes into the tent and all the drivetrain comes out, like everything and gets replaced, right? The race diffs go in, the race axles go in, transmission gets changed, like whatever. But if, if you're Joe Blow, the axle shafts you qualify on, the diffs you qualify on, the transmission you qualify on, they're staying in for race day. Right. And you don't know if you hurt them. And, And I... Like you drive harder in qualifying than you drive during the race. And that has to take its toll on a, on a race car. And I, it's, it's just one of those like untangibles or, uh, that you just can't measure, you know? And, and unless you have a big program where you're swapping out all those parts, like to me, it just doesn't seem worth it now. So I, that was the conversation Aaron and I had a lot was play it safe, get your money back get us a start anywhere. It really doesn't matter. We're going to play the attrition game anyway. We're going to drive smart. We're going to use pre-running. We're going to use course notes. We, we are going marathon on this. We, we don't need to. And part of that too was that we quickly found out like that my strengths aren't in the desert. So if we would have qualified first place, we would have just been run down by all these other cars because my desert experience has, is basically going out and pre-running the two days before qualifying, you know, like we just don't have that kind of desert, you know, back at home here. Our plan was to take it easy in the desert and, you know, catch up in the rocks. Exactly. And what's super cool. And, and you talk about this, uh, Kevin is that, that little hammer, right? Mm -hmm. So that's what that reminded me of listening to you, you know, talk about walk us through that that qualification is that that little hammer that's banging on a part whatever it is and it's eventually going to become a big hammer and the part's going to break and yeah uh, you know most of the racers don't have the luxury of going in and rebuilding their car that night after qualification and and hit with brand new parts but there's there's some caveats to that right you you got brand new parts and you think they're going to be the best, but they can give up too. You know, it's, it's, you don't have that, that tried and true. I mean, there's, there's two schools of thought here. It's like, you know, and, and you guys, we had that conversation and I remember having this conversation with you guys after you went through, you know, that diff that had this catastrophic failure that nobody could put their finger on and go, what the F? And, Thank God, um, you know, you got a new diff and, and tube works made good on all that. And it, it worked out for you guys at the end of the day. But, you know, it's I, as a rec wheeler, non racer, it's like I know my buggy's proven it's been through some crazy stuff. But, you know, that yeah. little hammer is banging on stuff, too. And eventually something's going to break. So it's like this this fine line that you travel as a, you know, having mechanical sympathy knowing that you're putting pressure on these parts, but yet you've sure. proven these parts as well. So it's, it's, it's an interesting, it's interesting a hard balance. Cause I, I would, per, I would prefer a power <laughs> right, pump yeah. that's been on two races and go to KOH than putting a brand new one on yeah. because I have more confidence in it. Yeah. Like just brand new yeah, parts exactly. aren't always the best. I mean, part of, part of my prep for KOH right. was obviously a new motor it had to happen. I would never have put one in before KOH, but you know, take on water, it's going right. to, you know, it's going to mess every motor. But in doing that, I put a new water pump on. Well, guess what? Yeah. As soon as I went to D- dyno tune, the water pump sprang in a leak. I've had the same water pump on for a year, Jeez. never had any problems with it. And just because yeah. I decided to put a new water pump on, it wanted to leak. So I put the old one back on and it made it through a KOH. 
You know, it's a year old, five See, races, five. And that's five, a perfect you know, example. Five trips with the boys, you know, off the rev limiter forever. And it just finished a KOH. I trust it more. You know what it is? It's it's pre COVID <laughs> yeah, water pump. That's exactly what it was. <laughs> there it is. Yep. There it is. <laughs> no, we. Uh, you know, you're talking about like if Aaron and I get along. That's something that that we both share and agree on completely. Is you know proven parts like we. I don't even remember what what it, what it was the diffs or the fuel pump or whatever. But like we had changed. Right. Oh, it was the orbital. I think we had changed the orbital because the one that was on the car was leaking, and then it were, there was talk about getting a new one and and putting it back on and this and that. And he's like, "Well, I've got." He's like, I don't even know where this spare orbital came from. It was in the corner of my shop. I don't even know what car it came off mm. of, how long I've had it. He's like, but it's wow. been in the car two days, and I trust it more than putting another one in. And I said, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> like, yeah. with, without, without question, because you install a part, and from the minute you put it in, you're building confidence in those parts. And the last thing you want to do is, like, disturb anything. The fastener that holds it down. You know, the, the lines, fluid the way they're tightened in. down. Like, man, what's yeah. the line? Yeah. Well, that was, yeah. As soon yeah, as you can establish. Like that was, that was probably 80% of our pre-running was me building confidence again in my car because, you know, as a part of my yeah. prep, even though I didn't want to put new diffs in, I didn't want to put a newer motor in. I did. And it took us two to three days for me to feel comfortable driving the thing again. Like I got to know that when I'm hitting this whoop, you know, and about to G out, like, are the brakes going to work? Like we put new pads and rotors on, like we, you know, I'd rather, I'd rather than been on the last race and know that they were good. That that's an interesting point. And, and you guys, I'm, I'm exactly the same mindset. It's like, even just, again, I'm just a rec wheeler. I'm not out, have a ton of money on the line, um, you know, racing, but it is, it's, it's when you're sitting in that driver's seat, and you know that you've turned every bolt that, you know, it's tight and, and the fluids are topped off. Whatever it is, you know your car is the best that it can be because you've touched every part of it. And there's something to be said about that. And that's exactly what, you know, you're talking about right now is having that confidence as a, a driver in a race of like, okay, I know this car inside and out. I know every freaking bolt Every freaking, you know, fluid that's in this car is topped off. I have that extra confidence. It gives you that mindset that we're ready. We're ready to race. And, and you know, I, I wonder if, if every driver is like that. I don't think so because people are different. But it, it's it's interesting. And, and like I say, just as a simple rec wheeler, you know, going out to KOH and running some of those trails, some of the toughest trails in California, it's like, Oh, I know my buggy's ready. I'm probably less ready than my buggy is, yeah, but proven. okay, let's go conquer some of this stuff and have fun. Well, yeah, you've been prepping yeah. your buggy Prove for it. Well, months. one of our Prove campfire yeah. like, kind of stories <laughs> went, you know, I think me and Kevin are both on the same page. I'm not a fan of having too many chefs in the right. kitchen. You know, like if I a car needed a motor put in, I want to be right. the one that puts every single bolt on it because it's, you know, you have accountability for mm -hmm. everything. It's like, I think that I think it went back to our pit strategy. We, you know, we pitted and helped out uh, Luke and Troy in forty five hundred the night before, and we had you know all kinds of friends and you know family, whatever. Everyone wants to help. Like we appreciate all the help, but when you have thirty people trying to pit for you that have never even seen what the axle mm. looks like, they don't know what the belt's supposed to look like. They don't know how to. Right. They've never put a a jug of fuel in the car before. They don't know how it does. They don't know how anything works but they're eager and they want to help, but that's not always the best. I would rather have right. two people who right. might be a little bit slower, but they know the car. They know how the fuel goes in. They know how the lug nuts come off. They know how to put them on. You know, they have more of a regimented way of doing it than, you know, 30 people that just want to help and not saying that they're purposely doing something wrong. It's just mistakes happen, you know? Because they don't, they no. just don't know. Well, that's it. I mean, it, yeah, they want to be involved. They want to help, and they're they're hoping they're doing the right thing. But it it is. It's like, what intimacy do you have with that that you know car in this 
uh, you know, 4,400 car in this instance, it's like, right. they're not driving it. You are. And, and you need to have that. Like maybe, that maybe his Dodge driver, truck at so home I, takes I five. I guess, but my race car only needs three because when we yeah, go to the next right? day, we'll ever be able to get it off. Yeah. 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 Well, it's accountability too. I mean, yeah. it's like, you know, it's if whose fault is it? I mean, no, not to say there's going to be blame thrown around, but it's like, if you know, as the driver slash mechanic builder of the car and something goes wrong on, you know, lap two, it, it was you my know, fault. It's like, you know? oh, shit, maybe I didn't check that bolt well enough. Or, yeah, know, yeah. 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 It, it's yeah. You, this is not, God damn it. You know, Billy Bob right. over there didn't do it right or whatever, <laughs> you know? And, Billy Bob. Um, I don't know. <laughs> well, he is in Texas. We do have a big country bar here named called Billy Bob. <laughs> not, not to be offensive or anything, but <laughs> I guarantee Aaron has a friend named no, we Billy have a Bob huge in Texas. Bar, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, Billy Bob's is great, man. That's a killer bar. Well, I've been there. I don't want to be offensive. I'm sorry if I was. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> there, go, there go half the listeners, Chris. That's right. That's Just right. Offended, offended all of Texas. <laughs> oh, shit. No. <laughs> So, okay. Yeah, this, this is good conversation. So, um, let's talk about, you know, you guys pre-ran, everything's good. Um, race day, what, what was race day like for you? Um, Aaron hitting the, you know, you're prepping for this and got a lot of money on the line and you end up, uh, you know, I, uh, uh, Kevin was like super, like he was like a kid on Christmas morning. Uh, you were super laser focused, but, but smiled when I came up to the car. Uh, what, what was going through your head when you're driving through those, you know, hammer town and into the short course and getting ready to, man, that's always the easiest for, part for, for the me. big race. I don't know why it's just, it doesn't, it doesn't phase me. No, because really, I knew going out of that, like we even had the conversation cool. with Kevin, like when we get like, we're sitting next to, I, I believe it was Dan fresh, right? And another bomber. And he asked me, Hey, what are we yeah. going to do? I said, yeah, We're gonna let him go. That's always been my mentality on the start line. Let him go. I do it every time. And okay. it always seems to work out. I don't think it did this time, but yeah, normally, normally, normally at regional <laughs> races, I think, I think KOH was more calm for me because the regional race, the, the flag goes down and it is pedal to the floor until the 30 or 45 minutes is up. You, you cannot let out. Any hesitation of any kind of saving the car, right. trying to go easy on it, I mean, you're just dropping places drastically. Like if you if you get a flat tire, you're done. Like you just you're you're not even in the top five hardly, mm -hmm. you know. But where I knew Koh is so long, it's like, man, we you know we're gonna be out there for hours. Like getting the head start on somebody off the thing and flipping the car over, you know, on the short course, it's not gonna do us any good. You know, let's just take it easy. I'm not strong in the right. desert because I have, don't have enough experience with it. So I knew everyone, would, you know, we even let a few cars pass us in the desert. You know, Kevin would be like, Hey, there's a car coming up. I was like, man, I'm just going to pull off to the side. Let them pass me. It's no big deal. We'll catch them. We'll catch them later in 20 mm -hmm. miles. They'll be broke down on the side. And it, it, sure. It, yeah. It happened several times. In the rocks. Yeah. So. So when you, when you pass oh, a car, dude, are you guys was, like, uh, fist you only knew what we like, were saying. Hell yeah. We just passed into the car. <laughs> What's going we on saying, in the we car? Had, we got a good slogan. I, I don't know if it's uh, appropriate for this though. <laughs> yeah. well, we have an explicit label. Just let her rip. Yeah. 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 I was, I was, I was told. Yeah, yeah. To yeah. No, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're, we're oh. keeping it professional. There were, there oh. were a few, let's put it this way. There were a few cars we wanted to make sure we beat. So. Oh, really? When we, when we went past those cars it was, it was um explicit it was, language it was or like, it was yeah. celebration for us right. you know yeah in, like internal you, you like always inside a, voices you going into you know? a race okay you have guys that you've been racing you know throughout a series or something in the past and it's like right I ha you know you have a checklist like i don't have to be first place but if i beat you know a b c d e i'm gonna feel really good at the end of the day and mm -hmm. i think we accomplished quite a few so okay Okay. We had our glory moments. So you yeah. had your 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 benchmarks. Yeah. Okay. All right. Because oh, I, yeah. I love in car audio. Well, yeah. We <laughs> I, I still that. wanted I still want to do it because I mean obviously I can yeah. edit it and use only right. the parts I want to use, but right. I just I, I failed to <laughs> yeah. uh, make it a priority and and it, it, and that so like that was a whole struggle for me the whole time, right? Obviously I, I play the media whore game and all that and I've you know trying to pump the YouTube and all that stuff. But if, if I was going to be a good navigator for Aaron, 
any time I spent like with a camera honestly takes away from that. Like, so I was trying to stay like you talk about the, the vibe and the camp and all that. Like, man, I've never been so serious. Like not even for my own effort. Like it was go to bed at 10, get up at six, like every day, just trying to be doing something that would benefit us, you know, Uh were you the oldest uh, man in camp? I probably here's a, was. Here's a good yeah, one. I probably here's was. a good one. For you. I, no, I mean, qualifying, qualifying morning. Oh. I may have stayed out a little too late at the uh, the Ultra Threes. So I, I walk. <laughs> oh yeah, it was oh awesome. the so Ultra I Three race was camper. awesome. I'm like in a pair of like basketball shorts, no shoes, no shirt, and there's Kevin standing over there by the car, only like full race suit, outside. full shoes, full everything ready to go, and I just like. I grabbed my head. I was like, oh man, I done messed up. I was like, I got, I got, <laughs> Dad, I'm in trouble. Dad's waiting. <laughs> Dad, Dad's there. Where, Where were you, you last night? Why are you not up early? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm, not, I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed, yeah. Aaron. Yeah, right, right. I'm yeah. so disappointed. So it was, it was a, it was a fast, no, get it, the suit on, get good. the shoes on. Where's my helmet at? All right, let's go. We, we, we got there plenty of time. We had time to walk and oh, that's, do everything, so that's it funny. worked out. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. <laughs> so, so yeah, you lost a, a day or two pre-running. Um, did you feel like you were you were set? Did you feel confident about the course? I would have loved to do or? more pre-running. So we, we were able, even though we lost some downtime mm-hmm. waiting for parts to show up and, you know, mechanical problems that we were fixing and bugs, you know, we got to run all of the desert. We got to run all the rocks once. Um, but we had an opportunity okay. to even go back and run it more. It's one of those things. It's a, it was a balance of, well, we haven't, nothing's gone wrong in the car in the last 120 miles of pre-running. Right. And at what point are we tipping the table of now we're actually hurting the car for the race? So we, right. we, we just kind of agreed on once is enough. If I had to do it again, obviously next year, I'm going to try to figure out some alternative. I've got to get like a side-by-side or another car, like a lot of teams do. You know, the the idea would okay. be I would want to run that- it one time in my car just to get all my bugs worked out. If if I, if you, I feel like if you can run it 50% pace, the whole thing without having any problems, your car's ready to race. And then from then on out, though, I think yeah. you're just putting more wear and tear on it going forward to actually in the race. That's where you could jump in something different. And get those pre mile pre pre running miles. I've got an idea. That it would have been beneficial, I think. I've got an idea. You know, maybe Kevin Jones will finish his car, and you could write seat in Kevin Jones' yes. car on Friday <laughs> and see the track. <laughs> and then you, Kevin can write. write yeah, it sounds good. Let's Saturday. do it. There you go. I like this. It, it wouldn't. It wouldn't be so. A back bad, back to my buddy Troy yeah. that runs like forty five hundred. Yeah. We've done that two. <laughs> yeah. We've done that two or three times throughout the oh, season. Man. Like we'll pre-run together separate in our cars and then I'll go race with him. He'll get right out of his car, jump in my passenger seat and I'll drive it. It's, you know, we, it both beats us up a little bit more, uh-huh. but we both, by the time we get to my race, it's like, Oh dude, we remember, we remember that rock, you know, we remember that turn. It makes us a lot faster. Well, it's just, yeah, it was just like Justin Wicks riding right seat with sure. Woody and getting Absolutely. a preview of the course the day before, which it does. has to have a huge know. advantage. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, I mean, look, why does Cameron Steele, you know, race, you know, 19 different races that Because he's Cameron Steele. I mean, you know, it's just so he can get more <laughs> more seat time and more views uh, of the track. Yeah. I mean, when we, when we get, that one year, go ahead. When we get to the King's Veto part of this race oh. recap we got a cameron Steele story <laughs> mm. i might know part of that story so so yeah let's talk about the race so you guys cross into you know i i uh, saw you guys fist pump boom you guys go into the short course and then go off the line let's talk about race day how did how did it go i mean first yeah sure uh anyone Bueller. I mean, first lap, I mean, we just took it super slow, super easy, let a few guys pass, wound up passing a couple guys back again that were pushing too hard. And I mean, we, 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 we had a plan to skip remote pit one and to go to straight to Maine because we had, we knew we had enough fuel from pre-running. Um, the, the idea was just to make it back to Maine and we needed one can of fuel. And that's when we found out we had an axle shaft seal leak, you know? And that's when we had to sit there for a minute mm. and discuss what we were going to do. 
at the time we were like, man, we just don't have, I don't think we have enough time to sit there and pull it apart. We had the parts, but we, we made the decision of, Hey, give us two quarts. We're going to give it to the remote pit and then dump a quart in every time we stop by. It was the best case scenario. So really okay. the car was fine. We just threw a quart of, quart of fluid in the front end and put fuel in it and it's off to the rocks. Yeah. Um, wow. So it was, it was smooth. Yeah. I, I, I don't like to go fast. So the desert lap <laughs> would be uh, I, uh, similar to, to what you're saying. I, it I scares me, man. I don't calm, know. Cool, collected, keep the car well, together. Well, it, was, uh, it, it was an interesting experience for me because when I rode with LeSage last year, he's done nothing but desert and okay. Southern California and Baja and everything else. And I would say his comfort in the desert is beyond mine. And I, I just trusted his ability and his knowledge of his car and everything. And we went, we went quick in the desert. And Mm -hmm. and I think that's probably one of the reasons we, we broke some parts, but uh, (laughs) so then to, to fast forward with Aaron, you know, we pre-run and I'm like, Hey, you could like pick it up a little bit. And he's like, well, I just, I, I don't know what I'm doing. And I'm like, okay, well that's, that's good to know. That's important. Like just drive as comfortable as, as you feel, I guess. And, you know, and, and you could see, it was like tangible how much faster he would get just the more miles he would put on mm-hmm. the car and like mm-hmm. understand like, cause we would even talk about like the color of the soil, you know, he's like, well, the color change makes it look like it's a whoop. And I'm like, yeah, but it's just different soil. It, it actually, by the time you get there, you realize, oh, it's smooth. It's just a different color. Mm. So there's, there's all these desert things that I guess I just have taken for granted because this is where we live and this is what we see. Mm-hmm. So Aaron had to like build, some of this knowledge and build some of these skills. And the last thing I wanted to do was like be pushy and uh, make yeah. him yeah. Over, overdrive the car, overdrive his abilities. And then, you know, there goes his investment. See, I think a, a mistake in the rocks sure. is one thing. Stuff. You flip so over like, the rocks, you flip it back over and keep going. You flip over in the desert. That was my whole right. idea. I was like, yeah, yeah, you're done. Yeah. You know? That my could be eyes, a game ender. So yeah. It's definitely something right. I'm going to work on. Yeah. So yeah, it was for sure. Yeah. So, I mean, we were no doubt on lap one, we were, we were off pace. And I even said to him a couple of times, I said, I'm actually surprised we haven't gotten past more. Cause I think, I think about five, maybe six cars legitimately came up behind us, gave us like the push to pass. A couple of them gave us a bump, very cordial. Like it was, yeah. It was, you know, that, professional. That was, that was yeah. Awesome. Very <laughs> like, I mean, they were like, they were legit. Like, I, I think even the first one, I was like, that was impressive. That guy did that so, <laughs> it was just so graceful. So graceful. Like, <laughs> how, how at 60 miles an hour, you can cut through somebody's dust, <laughs> get up on them, and then touch them at like three miles an hour more than they're traveling. Like, I was like, yeah. Wow, that was that was really. Yeah, well we're done, looking over. Sir. We're like, you know, like hey, <laughs> hey, thanks, thanks, thank, thank you. Sir. You're like tipping your hat day. to him. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, cause I, I mean, I've been, you Pardon know, I've, me. yeah, I've been hit really hard, and and it's like it's it's not fun, you know, and it it feels very reckless. So to to get the the professional tap was was much appreciated, you know, because because <laughs> honestly, in the dust, you can't see him in the mirror, you can't hear the siren, yeah. like none of that. So it, until somebody either comes all the way around you in a multi lane section, or they have give no you idea. a physical push, you you often don't, you have no idea they're there. Well, doesn't the push to pass show up on your screen it, or something? If they, like- if they use it, but what we found early on in those first couple miles where these, these passes are trying to be made mm-hmm. is the sun was so low and it was directly behind me. It was blinding out the LED bulbs oh, on the racing wow. tracks. So okay. I actually, after the first one happened, I started shrouding it with my hand oh, so, wow. that I could, so that I could actually see the LEDs light up. Okay, uh, because the sun was literally directly behind us, coming straight into the screen, and I, I couldn't see any. It's illumination funny. I on didn't it. even know that wow. thing lit up yeah, it, until it, we got it, into there, the night. Yeah. I had no idea. Like I thought it was just sitting there. I had no <laughs> idea what it was doing. <laughs> yeah. Right, because they, they put it on, you know, race morning while you're sitting in line, and Aaron looks over and he goes, "Do you know how to use that thing?" And I was like, "Yeah, yeah, I got you." And he's like, "Yeah." He's like, thank God. Like, he's like, I don't even know what that thing does, you know? Yeah, like, right? Yeah, I don't, I'm like, don't worry about it. But, the, 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 yeah. You drive, I'll worry. But yeah, the, the desert was fine. You know, I, I know we lost some positions from speed, but we gained some positions because, and it was, that was part of like, 
it was really good for Aaron to see like that, that kind of pace, that marathon pace, because somebody would blow by us and then literally a mile later, they're off to the side with a flat tire. Wow. And, okay. and so you, you get to kind of understand that's what it looks like to push too hard mm-hmm, because mm-hmm. it's like, they just made up that time and got around us, but then they blew a tire and now they lost five minutes, you know? So right. it, it's a really fine line of your, you know, yeah, you're riding that bleeding edge. As yes. Chris says. Yeah. You yeah. have to, you have to, you know, keep the car alive, drive smart. Cause maybe, maybe you kill a tire, but maybe you rip the whole corner off the car. Maybe yeah, you go, right. maybe you good. go end over end, you know? Or, yeah. Uh, cartwheel or whatever. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So Aaron may have been, you know, conservative, but at the same time that, that keeps our yeah. story. At, know, the, at the end of the desert, when we got to the main, three. I had zero concerns of, you know, anything being hurt on the car. We lost no tires. Uh, you know, all the gauges were good. Mm. We never overheated anything. Like, I mean, the car felt as good after the desert as it did the starting line. So that was important to me. Wow. Yep. Okay. Yep. That's, that's, that's good. That's awesome. Yeah. So you were super confident going into, uh, main pit and then hitting lap two yeah. which is beginning of the rocks yeah 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 i think honestly uh ov- overly confident I, like but yeah. he quickly like <laughs> and i don't i don't i don't mean that in a bad way so, like aaron said it hard? before i said I it know, i didn't know we got didn't know to the spoon- pace that i needed to be yeah we got to spooners right we got to spooners going down spooners and he's charging like he drops it into low range and he's like f yeah we're in the rocks like now it's my turn and he was pushing and i and i'm thinking like oh wow this i'm gonna be in a lot of pain by the end of the day like (laughs) this this is really this is really aggressive but part of me was thinking like well maybe this is 4400 pace maybe this is what you have to do guys talk about like getting after it in the rocks Mm -hmm. but by the time we got to the bottom and rounded the corner for outer limits we quickly it was they quickly checked me i think it was a good opportunity too fast you know i mean if we popped a tire after one trail then it's like well we have 30 more to go like obviously i was going too fast (coughs) right Right. so yeah i think that was that was probably the best thing that could have happened was kind of that that reset or gut check of okay we need to find somewhere. And we had a conversation about, okay, you may have been too conservative in the desert, but now you're being too aggressive in the rocks. <laughs> right. So like try to find that sweet spot that is, is efficient in the desert, but is not, you know, tearing the car apart in the rocks. And it, you know, it took a little while and there were some stumbles and stuff. And I, and I just told him like over and over, I was like, Hey, you're not warmed up yet. Like, don't even sweat it. Like that there's a, you know, you start early in the morning, you're cold, everything's like mm-hmm. not ready. You know, you're all tense in the desert. Like, just like you said, we have 30 rock trails. I'm like, give it a couple trails. Like you'll, you'll get into your groove. You'll find, you know, you and the car, like start to sure. work together and all that. And it, and it did. I mean, it started to play out that way. That's cool. So, For sure. So, um, so you're you're rocking and rolling through the rock trails, and, <laughs> literally, and um, cars cars responding. You you had one flat, so you had to change. Yeah, that we did. Out, we changed it on course. course. And yep. then there, that's where I learned another lesson. Okay, which we already had talked about before. Never turn the a race car <laughs> off. Which I don't know why we had talked about Never. it. In I guess it's just habit. I was like, oh, we're gonna get out of the car, change the tire. Let me turn it off. So we, we change a tire, we go to start it, uh-huh. the motor's stumbling. I'm like, oh no, what's going on? Come to find really? out a, a fuel pump just, it just decided its day had come, I guess. But, you know, thankfully we had another fuel pump wired in, ready to go. Oh, it was just a matter of pushing another button, car fired right up and started. So from then on out, the car never turned off again. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you just don't <laughs> shut it down. Yeah. Yeah. Learn. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that funny? Gosh. Yeah. I heard a lot. Of, yeah. Amazing. So motors, trannies, and fuel pumps. I and heard I a never lot had of fuel a fuel pump, pump problem before. I don't know. Yeah. We even had a fuel pump problem yeah. going into pre running. And that was a new pump that we had put and in. Pre running. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. In tank. Are yours yeah. in tank or yeah, external? I don't know why. Yeah. Yeah, because hammers two in a row. Because like hammers. I said, 
because, because hammers. Pump Hashtag ago, because I hammers. All year on the yeah, same fuel one. pump, never pulled it out, never changed anything. Like it just worked. And then you get to hammers and two fuel pumps later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Two. F- wow. Just because the rocks yeah. are bigger and you get a lot more shook up. I'm all shook up. So, yeehaw. So, um, I mean, you have a ton of, of, of friends and stuff helping out, volunteering that day in the pits, and, and they're keeping you apprised. You had good radio comms uh, throughout the day. To, you know, to I don't know think we found position, position until lap three yeah. at the very end. I, it just never dawned on, it never dawned on yeah. us to even ask. Really? Well, and it okay. wasn't, I mean, it wasn't, uh, yeah, for 100%, it was an afterthought. But to go with our initial plan, the initial plan was to finish, to drive our own race, to do all those things. But I think at one point in lap three, yeah, I like uh, Garrett, who was running his his friend running pit two. We had the, probably the best comms with, and and Garrett was like, in my opinion, kind of an MVP for the day. But it is one point I was like, it, we we're having a long day, you know, and I was like, hey Garrett, uh, entertain yeah, us a little bit. I'm like, tell us. <laughs> I'm like, tell us something, dude. I'm like, I'm like, give us some stats, like something you know and and he's like oh okay stand by and, and i think he initially came back with like you're the first that's when the, the on course, after the exhaustion the excitement kind of hit we there like, for a second we're like yeah. what really like i thought we were way back yeah. there you know wow yeah yeah See, we, that's it, that was cool so i i think that's important i mean just to know where you're at in the game, right? And then you being a rookie, it was like, okay, that's super freaking cool, right? It was like, okay, I'm I'm kicking some ass right now. Yeah, yeah. It kind of it kind of reminded me, Jason, of uh, uh, when I was sitting in Jackhammer a couple years ago, and and you got on the radio, and I was like, I was like, where am I at? And you're like, you're a Jackhammer, and I was, you know, expletives later, I'm like, no kidding, right. but. I'm like, where am I at? You know, and, and it was like, you, you know, you came back with a stat because at it, some point your day is so long sure. and, and it's now it's, it's drifting towards misery that, uh-huh. that you're looking for anything, right. you know, give me some hope. Yeah. So to hear, I mean, cause our day went from, we were doing okay to, we had a bunch of mechanicals, which we haven't even covered all of to like, we don't think we're going to finish to hearing Oh, your first rookie or on course, and and then it's like you know your emotions yeah. are just doing this roller coaster like sure. all day, you know, and cool. it, and it, it's important to get information at some factual. Yeah, and then they're then they're starting to yeah, kind of tell like, us where like, do hey, we man, stand? Right. What is going? You're you're gonna you have the time to finish. Like you're you're not dead last. Like you you have a chance. And it's like what I thought we were long done like two hours ago. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sure yeah. sure yeah i think uh between so the fuel the tire the fuel pump that that was fine we were working with it and then throttle cable um, yep what's next it's, the throttle cable yeah it didn't break oh, it throttle melted cable it's, just, it's a problem that i've chased throughout wow. the it's, it's throughout the years <laughs> what or throughout the whole year i've chased it and thought i had it figured out i've tried different routing of it and what's crazy is i put a throttle cable in right before he left we pre-ran on it. We qualified on it. We got through the desert. We got through lap two. And it's like, now it decides to have a problem. I don't know. But th- knowing that I had that problem <laughs> yeah. previously, I had packed an extra throttle cable in the car specifically. So I had a spare oh, in good. the car. Oh, you had one so, on the car. Wow. I, wow. I have to, yeah, at this point, I absolutely have to interject and say Aaron is the most prepared person I've ever worked with. I mean, like we've talked about before, like, Oh, like the Navy seal, like two is one, one is none. Like that throttle cable was a perfect example of, we could have been writing our KOH recap with, it was going great until it wasn't because of a throttle yeah, cable. Like that cost 30, 40 dollars there. Yeah. But, but his preparedness, like, He's like, man, the cable's sticking. Like, I feel like I'm going to lose control of the car. Uh, and I was like, we'll pull over and, and let's deal with it. And I'm literally thinking we're going to be like linking zip ties together. Next thing you know, right. like, I'm going to be pulling the throttle and he's going to be steering or something. Oh and he my. goes, he goes, no, yeah, I, like, just I give have me a, a brand yeah, new Just give me a few minutes. So I'm going to go fix it. Tool and, bag. Like, go over there and pee real quick. And you know, we'll, we'll give me, give me five minutes and we'll be back. Yeah. Don't worry. <laughs> 
and I, I couldn't even believe that, like, I mean, that's that's the level of detail that, that really pays off. You know, whether it's, like, a cord of gear oil to put in the axle or a, another throttle cable, like, it, Aaron's so, level of preparedness all week blew me away. Like, the amount of things that he had in his truck, like, oh, yeah, I got another lube locker. We can change the differential. Oh, I've got... I mean, I don't even know. Like, oh, I've got an orbital. I don't know where it came from, but I have it. You know, like, <laughs> not once he did just, we go to the parts store. It it's like you know, a magic like bag. we never left the lake bag. Yeah, it's it's like a magic bag of tricks. He just wow. he just keeps pulling stuff out of his truck and tool bag, and it, that that's so crucial. So so that's exactly what I was alluding to earlier. Is I I could see that you guys were on the same page and and how prepared you are, Kevin, for your races and. I could just see that in Aaron when I walked into your camp and that's a perfect example because, and, and I'm on the same page, right? So that's why I read into all this. It's like, I'm the same way. It's like, I carry too many parts to a fault on my Jeep. And then when I got the buggy, it was like, well, I don't need to yeah, carry all this. You have the best parts. Crazy, You're good to go. You know, heavy duty stuff. Right. But you know, you know, your vehicle so well and you're like, Mm, that could cause me a problem. A it little throttle no cable way. wrapped up behind the right. seat would be no issue to carry, right? So I can totally sympathize with that whole thing, and it's it's knowing your vehicle. It's knowing, you know, it's like, well, this could be a problem, yep. so I'm going to carry this part. I attribute That's that freaking to cool racing to hear. the series because yeah, it's absolutely. like, yeah. you know, you only get 30 or 45 minutes of drive time, but when you get back and you're prepping your car again for the next one, it's like, okay, well, that – that wore out pretty quick. Like that's a part that now I know I need yeah. to either have on my car or have at a pit, even though it may seem silly, but it, it's a fast wear item. Like I need it, you know? Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Um, wow. Okay. So you guys get through lap two, rock, uh, lap, and then you come back into Maine. Splash right? of fuel. Yeah. The splash, big, uh, you go, the, uh, cord the of big lap. Diff fluid. Later. Uh, I, <laughs> okay. Yeah, I don't think. I mean, lap two, the the real kick in the teeth was the uh, traffic jam on that. jackhammer, mm. and, it, and it's almost yeah, it's almost like I'm destined to have that. But um, we come around the corner to jackhammer, and Aaron's like, "What is all this? I'm going to go around all these cars." I counted, I like, counted oh, eight cars in front of me and four behind me. Like, it, it was like devastating. Yeah. And, wow. Uh, so I, I jumped out and run up there and it was Jordan Townsend and his IFS car had gotten through the main pinch, but as soon as he was exiting the pinch had broken a rear drive shaft was like, bound up, like broke off of it. just, like, it's just, just bad shape. And, uh, Rick Lavezzo was currently <laughs> trying to like rip him, rip him out of the way. Like they were, they were trying some gnarly stuff to try and get Townsend's car out of the way. And it wasn't working. So after a few minutes of that, the decision was made, well, screw it. Every car has to drive over Townsend's car. And so the first few did it, and it was a combination of driving, winching, driving, winching. I attribute, I attribute our finish to Kevin and getting like, out of the car, helping them, and then having radio communication with me. We would have been, we would have been sitting there for another hour or two. Really? The, actually, the, the 124 car behind us that we were pitting with, they wound up timing out there. Yeah, it's it's so crucial. Like, I mean, I can't take credit for that, but it's so important when you get to these traffic jams to to find an alternative, some way to push through I'm, and an alternative or something, or be part of this, right. be part of the solution for everybody. Yeah, you know? that's right. Yeah. It's like, do you just sit there in your car help and wait, him, help or everybody do you else. get up there and start pulling winch so lines like, and helping yeah, people because yeah. it's, it's only so, yeah. Like he mentioned, we were eight cars back. So I went down and I got our rock strap and I came up and we used our strap to get the seven cars or eight cars in front of us through. And I mm -hmm. told the, the co-driver right behind us. Um, I'm pretty sure we skipped. I'm pretty sure we Travis skipped Carpenter, quite a few I think people. He was with Gary Ease. <laughs> you, you, you may have line <laughs> jumped. Yeah, you video. may have line jumped ah, a little bit. A there, but. It's really hard through the rocks. <laughs> And I'm like, dude, I got this. We might have yeah. we might have skipped a few people, but that's racing, right? Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. So I told the the co driver behind behind us, I'm like, hey, just so you know, before it happens, 
when my guy gets here, I'm taking our strap, I'm jumping in the car, and we're out of here. So you yeah, might want to go get... Like, using our strap for eight cars, that's plenty. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. we're not going to stay mm -hmm. here another half hour and do eight more cars. So um, he's like, yeah, no problem. And he went and got his strap. And I think as soon as I pulled mine, he put his on and okay. you know, did like the next yeah, This isn't a whatever. charity here. Exactly. At some point, like, <laughs> like everybody likes to talk about the camaraderie and we're, we help each other, but at yeah, some sure. point you, you have to go back to racing. Yeah, you if can't our car stay was there broken, all day, you just or help. something at yeah. that point, for sure, so we, we got... could have stayed there all day and helped everybody. Right. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So we got through, we got through that and then, um, we're, we're getting our way up Jack and working at bombs away and all that. And I don't remember what, at what point, but Aaron's it like, it was only, we only man, made it like a hundred yards tire? out of it. And I'm and talking I about, like, we, I was like, we broke a wheel. We yeah, got a flat It wasn't tire. far. Something's wrong. Cause the rear end is just pogo sticking oh, no. on Kevin's rear side. I'm like, it's just not handling. I was like, is it just the train? And we keep driving and driving. I'm like, dude, we got to get out. We got to look at this. What, what's going on? So we finally get up to like a big flat top spot. I don't even know what trail we're on. And we get out of the car and we're like, everything visually looks fine. And that's when I started to notice when we winched around that car, I mean, you know, there was some body panel to body panel, you know, and I could see the scrapes on my body panels going uh -huh. to my sway bar. And then I looked down at my bypass. I'm like, Hmm, it's got some scrapes on it too. I wonder, I wonder what's going on here. And we start shaking the car and we're like, <sighs> Oh, the shaft on the bypass got bent, you know? So it's, it's locked up. The rear suspension is oh, not shit. moving at all. I'm like, we can't make it back mm. to main pit with a locked up bypass. It's going to, it's going to rip the chassis bracket off or it's going to rip the axle side off. Something's going to rip off with that oh, thing no. stuck. So that's when we made the decision. Let's jack it up. We pulled the bypass out. I'm like, Kevin, sit down, hold on to, <laughs> hold, hold on to big girl. And <laughs> I was like, you got a bypass like, we're making it to the next pit. <laughs> well, was dropping it off. Yeah, it was, it was funny wow. because we're like, well, the bypass is bent, and I look at him and I'm like, what, what does the car do if you take it off? And he's like, right, I have no, I have no idea. I've never had to do that. But we're and gonna I'm like, try it. I'm like, is there some valving in your coilover, or is it literally just a coil carrier? And he's like, no, there's some valving in there. And I was like, okay. Um, and then he's like, <laughs> he instantly went to being worried about his like four thousand dollar bypass, you know. And sure. he's like, I don't want it to get more beat up. I don't want it to get. And I was like, well, ratchet strap it to the car and this and that. And then finally, I don't even know how we got there, but I said, why don't I just carry it in my lap? If you're that, if you're that That's worried hilarious. about it <laughs> and then we'll just throw it out the window at pit two, which is like, I don't know, 10 miles or something. And he's like, yeah, okay, let's do that. Bypass. You know? So yeah, I've got, I've got one end of the bypass touching my toes and I've got the other like stuffing yeah. into my abdomen, you know, while we're trying wow. to so a go, of the go car trail ride. Yeah, exactly. And that's, yeah. that's where the, that's where the back yeah. pain started. Yeah. I made I'm, <laughs> with the two O with the two O coil over in the back that was not ready yeah. to hold the rear of the suspension up. Yeah. Right, so yeah. you, you didn't no. obviously have a, you didn't have a backup for that at all. Yeah. So you ran the rest of the race. Yeah. Our desert speed got cut in half. Back. Our rock yeah. speed got wow. cut in half. I think I attribute that to most of our time. Just that it got to where like we could have gone faster, but at that time yeah. we were so beat up that every bump was just bottom out, bottom out, bottom out. It, but you know, what do you, what do you do that? Yep. This is how many hours into the race was this at? It was pretty early that was, on. That was the middle of lap two. So, I mean, I don't uh, know, one, one o'clock in the afternoon or something. I mean, I just I'm looked at really sure, Kevin was honestly, like, well, it's uh, all four tires are still pulling. We're not going to stop, you know, like, you know, it could, it could be worse. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, no, we talked about, still working. yeah, yeah. We, we talked about kind of like some of our thresholds or criteria for like, what's going to be a deal breaker for us. And it uh -huh. was, it was like, well, if we lose four wheel drive, that's a big problem. But as long that as is, all, yeah. as long as all four tires are still powering, like we, we'd be stupid not to keep pushing. So I said, you can, you can drive with less shocks, you know, we can just go slower and, and, uh, you know, all those things rang true. So we, it was pretty dejecting though. Like, I, I don't know if Aaron felt it, like we didn't talk about it, but I remember sitting up on that knob, like while we were looking at that bent shock thinking like, Oh, this is it. This is this is how we I, DNF. I didn't have that like, thought. This is how it. This is how it ends. <laughs> Those are pretty well protected, aren't they? I mean, is that that's that's an un. I mean, I, I don't think I've ever heard of a bench shock other than it was. It was one hundred percent. So it was self induced. Well, to, yeah, yeah. I, I mean the the 
car to car entanglement as Aaron uh-huh. went over I mean, slash was like through Jordan's rev limiter car. a little bit winch uh-huh. line rev limiter winch, it was it know, was pretty intense it <laughs> yeah yeah it it wasn't it, it wasn't pretty done. by any means but um you know it, it, it yeah there was, so, there was no other, racing there was it's no other racing, choice yeah but i mean so obviously you don't carry a spare bypass and there wasn't a spare no, bypass it's such a it's back, not it's such a custom camp, part but, we uh, didn't even not, bother uh well, yeah right right what 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 major other components or do you carry as spares on the car um, I mean, like drive lines or so yeah I, mean, any, I, anything you want I to put share a spare drive that? line on there which whenever i built the car i made it to where front and rear are the same so um i normally don't care carry a drive line you know the short course kind of stuff it's too short you don't even have time to change one um right we put we put an alternator on it a power steering pump like a tensioner an idler Yep. A few little, a few little fittings, you know, a couple of like ninety degree yeah. hose fittings for hydraulic lines. Some, uh, you know, a random bundle of hydraulic line, a random bu- bundle of sure. fuel line. I mean, and tools. You know, this really, there's really only so much you can carry before you start putting right. too much weight on the car. And you, know, at some point, like, I mean, you, mm-hmm, you just you exactly. can't carry everything. You can't put a spare diff on the back or something. You know. <laughs> As cool as that would be, it just it's no, no, it's no, 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 right, right, right. So okay, so you got through that situation. You continued on with the race. What, uh, what, what else was going on? Well, I think at that point the speed was slowed so much that Aaron's like, I, I just want to get to the finish. Like, like there was even talk that like an official finish, you know, in time was questionable and he's like yeah we're just gonna drive until we get to the finish line we have a lap and a half like we're just gonna drive and as he was doing that i i kept looking at the gps and looking at the clock and looking at the gps and looking at the clock and i finally kind of told him like hey dude i think we can do it like i think we can I remember at one point he said an official pick it up finish. just a like, little bit because if if you do I think we can finish because at that point I'm like, <laughs> we're not getting a top 10. We're not getting a top 20. Like we just yeah. hope we can finish in time. Right. But if we would have overdrove the car without that back, you know, the bypass back there, it's like, we're just, we're beating ourselves up. We're beating the car up. Eventually, you know, we'll just break something right. silly for no reason. So it's just like, take it easy. And then at one point he told yeah. me, he's like, dude, I think we can finish in time. Let's, let's pick it up. You yeah. know, just take it up 15%. I think we can do it. Yeah. That's cool. yeah, I told him if if there's anywhere you think you can grab a mile an hour, like take it because if we get to the finish and we're 30 seconds short, like we'll look back on these these spots and go, dang, if we would have just picked it up a mile yeah. an hour everywhere, we would have had it. So, uh, you know, he 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 focused and and kept driving. That's, so that's a good point of the the co dog seat, right? Is like encourage and you're you're a therapist in that, that right seat of like. <laughs> yeah. Just like, dude, the car's running good. We can we can go a little bit faster here. You know, having that encouragement, that mechanical sympathy, and going, right. okay, no, we got to back off this. You know, X Y Z, whatever. Yeah, I but mean, if that's, I that's, that's that's where I don't understand how the single seat guys do it. Oh, yeah. If I would have been in that situation, I would have stayed at that pace just to be right. just to be. I was I was more or less doing it just to be comfortable mm-hmm. at that point because I was like, you know, I just want to be comfortable for the rest mm-hmm. of this. There's mm-hmm. no point in beating me or the car up. Let's, I don't want to be walking back. So I don't know. That's when Kevin was like, Hey dude, we, we're, we're, we're destined. Yeah. We're, we're going to finish like before time, like a couple hours before, like we could, we can do this. And yeah. it really helped a lot. Yeah. My, my only, yeah. My only fear was I, I felt like that was the stuff we could control and we could okay. go at a speed that would get us to the finish line in time. But I knew based on things like what we experienced in Jackhammer, that all it takes is somebody else's bad day <laughs> to result in your DNF. So right, right. Aaron kept saying like, well, what do we got? We just have a couple of rock trails left. Oh, I, I asked like, him yeah. so many, every time we got out of a rock trail, I was like, so you know, we're, like, about to di- like that. We're, like, we're almost there. Right. And he would never give me like a direct answer. And I was like, Oh man, this means it's, we're far away. Oh, Go to the next boy. rock trail. He's like, uh, you got a few more. It's like, <laughs> how many more do we have? You know, but I feel like, I feel like if you would, I feel like if you would have said, hey, you have 10 more, Where I would have been we? like, okay, we're done. You know, Stop it, it kind of helped out. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. You don't, you don't want to give them so much that yeah. they, they just, yeah. You don't want yeah, to, don't, to don't want to lose hope. Yeah. You don't want them to be dejected <laughs> and just yeah. you know, shut, shut down on you. You want to give them that glimmer of hope. And, right. and he was like, I think at one point Aaron was like, well, what is it you're so worried about? And I was like, if we could get through sledge on lap three, that was the last one where I kind of was worried that like another 30, 45 sledge minute, could be a real you know, problem. traffic jam. And I was like, mm-hmm. yeah, another yeah, problem. Delay and, the and, traffic yeah. jams. Yeah. Right. Cause I know how one line sledge is, you know? And I was like, if yep. that's, if that's a mess, we could have a real time problem on our hands. And, and once we got through, through that, it was like, he's like, yeah. are, are, are you like, comfortable now like do you feel more confident in this yeah. and i was like we got really fortunate yeah, we rolled so. up to sledge like, and now okay. nobody was there. Know, now that things, was one of those yeah that was one of those times where we were driving it was, for it was a ghost town it was, it was an, a car yeah yeah it was wow. it's and that's what's crazy like so this was my this was my first 4400 race right so therefore it was my first lap three race mm-hmm. and man i tell you what when you're that far off pace and you get to lap three, it's a ghost town. Like, yeah, it is a quiet, dark desert. And occasionally, wow. <laughs> occasionally you come across like another car. But for the most part, you well, are there was one point down in there time. that we were and like, we were trucking along at the very end. And it's like there was five cars just all on the side right there. Remember that where I want to say it was Brian Capira. Remember, he was he had broken axle shaft or something and he was still pushing to still pushing to get. Still oh, that was get oh, through, okay. Was, so that was before. We, we, I, I like. I just I remember about driving that. through there like nonchalantly, like our slow pace, and it's like, well, we just passed like five or eight cars. Like, what's going on over yeah. here? Yeah, that was actually so. That was lap three, uh, beginning of the rocks again. So we're going up outer limits, and this time on lap three, you had to do upper outer limits. And we come around whatever corner, and Caprera is there in three wheel drive. And it was one oh, of the, wow. it was one of the wider corners on outer limits. And I told Aaron, I'm like, dude, I'm like, get in front of him right now. Like, I do not want to be stuck behind that three wheel drive spaceship. Like, right. I'm like, you have to cut this corner and do like the harder rocks and get in front of him. And I don't think he quite understood in the moment, but like he saw his line and did it. And I was like, oh, sweet. And then no sooner do we do that. And we come around the corner to the main upper outer limits obstacle. That's like always kind of you know, got a camera on it or whatever. Uh And there was somebody broken in the main line, bad, broken way bad. Yeah. Uh, It was sky and Cole Johnson. I think, I I don't know if Cole was his co-pilot there, but it was definitely sky's IFS car. Or is that Cole? No, it's, 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 uh, Cole, Cole, whoever has the IFS car. I apologize. Yeah. Uh, their IFS car, they were kind of bellied up. They were they were struggling. Then there were like four cars behind them, just parked. And then the old Shear car, the new MWAC car, was taking like a weird left line, trying to get around everybody. And I jumped out and I ran up to the front, and uh, I was like, "Oh, this doesn't look good." <laughs> uh, and the MWAC car, I honestly just didn't have much confidence was going to get through the the hard line. And they started to show progress. And I told Aaron, I'm like, dude, get up here and just like line jump all these guys. Like we got to go and we got to go now because now we're right. in a race. We're stuck with all the IFS. It's dark. You know, 90 something low inch visibility. wide spaceships. And I'm like, it's dark. And I'm like, I'm like, dude, we have to get, we have to get this bomber in front of these IFS cars. Right. Uh-huh. And uh, Aaron made it happen. I think it was one quick little winch, and we passed like that was eight one cars of those ones where we got back limits. in the car, and it was like and, a glorious feel- moment. You know, like how did we just how did we just do that? You know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Aaron, I think Aaron literally said he's like, I have no idea how that just happened, and I was like, it doesn't matter. Let's go. Like, we gotta wow, go. we gotta go. Go. Right we gotta now. go, and we gotta go now. So. <laughs> Yeah, then we then we were in the dark doing the rest of the rock trails by ourselves. At some point, and, at some point we lost our know, big light bar. I, I mean, that's I the time that was when, one of the stops. Yeah. Some somewhere during the daytime, the, <laughs> that was, the that was in the daytime. The just yeah, decided right. to fall off <sighs> the chassis. Like, yeah, left the chassis. Yeah, so we zip yeah, we zip tie that back. So yep. all of our left dark chat. racing was with two small little like amber Baja signs lights on the bottom, and that's it. It was pretty tough. Yeah. Wow. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Well, you couldn't go fast, so it's all right. Yeah, it, it honestly it all worked out. Yeah, it worked out. 
And Aaron had a bunch of gear yeah. oil in his eyes, which he yeah. There's a good there's out. a good Ooh. story behind that later, one. So we so. go into Ooh. so yeah. backtrack for whatever reason. I thought, oh, everyone in yesterday did this thing in like five or six hours. We're in a 4400 car. We'll be doing about the same time, even with our extra lap. I'm not gonna really. I'm not gonna eat anything. You know, tragic mistake. So we're coming in on the <laughs> mm-hmm. last mm-hmm. pit two that you can do before mm. you hit the lake bed to come back. And we're radio it in like, all right, you guys put another thing of diff fluid in it. Let's get a little more fuel. I was like, does anyone have any fuel or any, any kind of food? And I get handed an Uncrustable and I'm like, what do I do with this? So I'm like, well, I can't get it in my helmet. So I'm like, I'm breaking this Uncrustable apart with my, with my hands and I'm shoving it in my mouth. I'm starving to death. And then we get out of the pits, we get going, throw the visor down and my visor just kept getting dirty. You know, I didn't realize it at the time that the diff fluid was slinging off the tire and hit my visor. And I, I at that point, I had lost my, oh, you know, my, uh, whatever that is, the little microfiber deal. So I, I was just, I had been using my glove. Well, uh huh. My glove had peanut butter and jelly all over it. So I go, I go to wipe my mask, and it's just peanut butter and jelly oh, no. blackout. I'm like, oh, you got to be kidding me. So then I'm like trying to wipe it. I'm like, okay, I give up. I had to put the visor yeah, up. Awesome. So now I'm driving through the last bit of it, you know, 10 hours, 11 hours in through the desert. Sand's hitting my eyes. I've got hardly any lights on. I've got peanut butter oh, and jelly in my eyes. Oh my. I've got diff fluid just coming in. I'm like, I'm blind. I don't know what to tell you, Kevin. He's like, just keep going straight. Keep going straight. Is- <laughs> yeah. Just keep going. You're doing good. Yeah. You're doing good. Little so left. Was, little left. That was, that was, that was right. Like little right. Like, more right. More right. Hundred percent confidence <laughs> in what you're telling me because I can't see anything. Uh, it worked out though. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Stevie Wonder. So anyone out there listening? Engaged. Peanut butter and jelly <laughs> is not for race day. <laughs> not, no. Not a good race day uh, snack. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, jeez. Granola yeah. bars are probably better. See, these are, yeah. <laughs> these are the little insights yeah. that we get here on Wheel wow. and Wine and Whiskey. Yeah, yeah I, no shit. I had a whole bunch, you know, like at work, we call them squirrel snacks. Like I had a bunch of like peanut butter crackers and mm-hmm. granola bars, stuff like stuffed in my little door bag. And, and just throughout the day when I had like, if he's just bouncing around in the rocks, sure. and he doesn't need my navigation. You know, I would just like eat a snack, eat a snack, eat a snack. And then it was like way late, you know, whatever at night. And I was, I was like, I don't think he's doing all that good. You know, I'm like, we got to get him some food. And then it yeah. turned out to be it like, was so the delicious food, going you know, down but... at the pits. It wasn't delicious. <laughs> you know, what are you going to do? Yeah, sure. And then it was, and then it was funny. Like he's, he's completely pissed that he's got like peanut butter and jelly on his gloves and it's like on his steering wheel. And, and I'm like, at one point I was like, Dude, you care more about peanut butter on your steering wheel than the fact that you just bent like a four thousand dollar bypass. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, get, I'm like, yeah. get over it. Like, you got some yeah, driving right. to do, you know. But, um, it, it's it. I think it really highlights like how important driver comfort is. You know, like sure. oh, yeah. if if you're sure. not comfortable, like nutrition and water, like that's way that's way more important than I ever like, figured. Nutrition, because I could definitely like, tell. I could definitely tell towards the end of how. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I was just making silly mistakes. I don't remember where that tro was, but remember when we stood it up on like two wheels and I just barely saved it. I mean, the the entire race day, I yeah. felt like we were going to tip ever. Yeah, you know, yeah. we were solid, planted on the ground. But then at that very end, no, it's like, not once. man, I almost yeah. made a tragic like race ending mistake because I just was getting sloppy and you know just you know not enough water, not enough food, you know. Yeah, that. Yeah, that, right. that physical physical and mental fatigue is real. I mean, and that's like that's something I never experienced such an before. Endurance thing. It, it I, I don't. Yeah, yeah. That's a yeah, long. That's the, a long time. You know. And that that's exactly you know what people don't realize during this race is the whole. I mean, there's a whole mental side of this thing, but the the physical that you're talking about right now is like. You know, you're in this freaking eight, ten hour. Well, car then you gotta, you gotta add, you gotta add. The, yeah, twelve, gotta, <laughs> twelve hours and two minutes or whatever it was. Like, okay, two well, minutes. We, woke, we yeah. woke up at five a.m. We got the car all together, right. we got all stuff together. We even sat in a line for yeah. an hour yep. and a half. Like we were, we were already in the car f- for two hours before yep. the flag went down. You know. Sure. The green flag. Right? Yep. Yeah. No, no doubt. Yeah. No. That. That's it. And and it, it's. 
it's <sighs> insane, and that's why I never want to race. <laughs> it's it's you guys literally are, are, it's are literally certifiable. Insane, like, yeah, it, certifiable. at one point, at one point in the dark, I think we're done with the rock trails or, or close to it. Maybe we're clearing aftershock or something. And Aaron's like, "This is the most pain I've ever been in in my life." <laughs> really? And like, wow. I, it's not an exaggeration. Every rock like, you looked I was, at, you were I just like so your teeth clenching. You're like, "Oh God, is this yeah. gonna hurt?" You're, oh no! Yeah, you're yeah. cringing ahead of time. Yeah, yeah. See, I, it, it's it's really lap three is an absolute. Like, I'd always kind of wondered what lap three is like. Yeah, and it, it's and now it's, you know. I think horrible. when we were going through the it's desert, really, the very really end, it was finally smooth <laughs> because, and flat. like, I was, I told you, I was like, I was having fun till the end of lap two. From lap two to lap three, that's when the fun kind of. Yeah, I mean, we were we were still having fun, but it wasn't yeah, not as fun. much fun because the body fun aches, the fatigue yeah. really yeah. set in. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the only the only true fun you're having is like knowing that the finish line is like that much closer. So yeah. so yeah, that's what that's what I was getting at. So like when you start seeing that light at the end of the train tunnel, there it's you like start to see the lights. Yeah, so the, there were there were yeah. a couple like every year the race course is a little different, and so in my mind there's always there's always one last challenge, right? That you're like, okay, mm-hmm. once once we get through this, like I feel like you could lose a drive shaft and still get there, you know, or whatever. And so it's like. You clear it was after turkey. shock, you go after over the hill, turkey, you hit Emerson, good. you do some of the easy, you do some of the easy stuff. Yeah. And like, we're trying to relax in those, those dark desert miles heading back to town and with no lights, with no lights, you know, and, and just minimal, yeah. minimal lights. And, uh, and I was like, dude, you have to climb into Turkey one more time. And mm-hmm. as soon as he got to the top of that climb, that like entrance to the top of Turkey, I was like, right. we did it. We're there. We're done. Like, we made it. We made this it. This is all we're, downhill. We can push it's, all, it's literal all downhill. Like, yeah, like that was. Yeah. 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 I mean, that that just the 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 uh, cycle of emotions, right? Like throughout the day, like you're super excited to start the race and then you get into the race and you're like killing it, doing good. And then you have all these issues and you, you challenges. Just, yeah. And you 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 overcome those. And then it's like, okay, I'm hungry, I'm tired, I'm getting beat to death here. I want this ride. To, There's no ejection button. There's no ejection button. <laughs> it's like a tilt a whirl, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was. It was like before we, as we're driving from Emerson to Turkey, like it was quiet in the car. Like at one mm-hmm. point, it was just quiet for like five or ten minutes. <laughs> Nobody's saying anything. Nobody's saying anything. He knows where he's going. Like and and you know, like we're both obviously hurting. And, and I said, like, do you want it to stay quiet or do you need like help right now? Like, I was like, well, I was like, on the radio. Yeah. I was like, I was like, I, I'm Put like, are you jazz on? What do you want? Like, would you like me to sing to you? Well, that was it. I was like, I was like, are you falling asleep? I, I might've could have fallen asleep. Like, <laughs> are you like, okay? Yeah. I was like, are you, Right. I was like, are you in the zone? Like where you, and he's like, yeah. he's like, I'm hurting. And I'm like, well, I'll just talk. I was like, I'll just talk. So I was like, I was like, we have, and I think I started like counting down miles. I'm like 21 I'm like, more miles. 21 you gotta be kidding miles me. to go, you know? And, and I was yeah. Like, yeah. 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 And I was like, okay. I'm like, maybe that wasn't the right thing to say. Yeah. <laughs> Keep it with we're the, almost we're there. almost there. Stay focused. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. I, there's definitely you can definitely tell the driver too much. You know. Yeah. I don't think I. I think I, I learned that. But it's interesting because I. I mean, you hear these stories that you guys are telling right now, and the single I, drivers. I have no idea how I, to do it. I couldn't. It do doesn't that. make any sense. Definitely to me. couldn't do that. I mean. Yeah, I mean that's to have that that co-driver. You know, when you're low, you they on when you you're up. in those when you're moments high, they of like, calm you down. what the hell did I you know? sign up for? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Just yeah, it's self. it's Im- it's impressive, you know, because I I think that's exactly it, like the yin and the yang, you know. And and there were mm-hmm. times where I was probably high and Aaron had to calm me down and he was probably high and I had to calm him, you know, like sure. it it ebbs and it flows and you feed off each other and uh you know, I, I think as long as like you can't ever say that like you don't chew on each other a little bit, but mm-hmm. as as long as the benefit is what far outweighs the you know the detriment i, I mean we laugh yeah. we i just can't imagine it doing yeah, it the we, other we way, definitely you know? yelled a couple i mean there's certain you know <laughs> yeah 
but the majority of it was yeah, you know, oh yeah, laughter, for sure. like yeah. many, like every small victory, yeah. you know, like all right, we did that, let's go. They yeah. it outweighs it. Yeah, 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 yeah. The the that's king's awesome. Oh yeah, the king's veto one. one was. I'll, I'll make it short, but so okay. we get we get to we get to king's veto, and Cameron Steele's car is broken, and he's. Is second we pull in, he's up there being the true sportsman and he's trying to like spot us, right? Okay. And I'm telling I'm telling Aaron from the minute we get there, I'm like, let me out, let me out, let me out. And and part of it is because I know I can help, and part of it is because I know I get wound tight when I'm stuck in the mm-hmm. car and, and we're not mm-hmm. making progress. So like I'm better mentally if I get out. And and I just kept saying, Let me out, let me out, let me out. And he's like, he's like, No, I got this, I got this, I got this. Well, next thing you know, that turns quickly into Screaming, he's pissed at Cameron. At like he's oh, like no. he's like, I don't wanna he's like, I don't wanna listen to this guy. Like, I don't trust him. I don't and you know, and so finally I'm like, No, you don't trust him, you trust me. Let me out of the car. So he lets me right. out. <laughs> and we we're on comms, right? I leave my helmet on, I plug sure. in my rugged radio, and Aaron and I can have a civilized conversation that nobody else can hear. Okay. So so I'm now playing translator. So Cameron is standing right next to me saying like, have your guy, you know, like put his tire here and this and that. And, and Aaron is in my ear saying, tell that mf <laughs> to get the F out of my way. I'm going to run him over. Had, it's it's you one know, of those like, things. Like I, so I would have rather like, walked up I'm there like, with no one okay, in the way. Okay. It always, it always worries me that like, okay, if I would have hit that a rock or certain yeah. way and I knew no one was in my way or, you know, like no one was there around. It's like I could have hit the rock yeah. in a certain way, bounced it, and you know, just gave it that blip of throttle. It might have got a little western or something, but I, I, I feel like sure. I could make it through. Driven but through it. Right. I've got, I'm paying attention to the guy standing in front of me that I have no idea who he even is, more than I am. I don't know who that guy is. You didn't know it was. You know, like, he's just some. He's like he barely, <laughs> barely got Sorry. any lights. Uh, like, he's uh, finally seen the shadows like of the rocks. Like, <laughs> yeah. I'm just like, I want to hit the line that I want to hit. Yeah. Don't tell me where to go. Yeah. Like, if I get up there and I get stuck, then maybe help me or something. Or I'll ask. Or something. But I'm like cursing at him and yelling at him and pointing and stuff. Yeah. And he keeps trying to point okay. at me. And I'm like, Kevin, I swear, man, oh, I'm about Lord. to get out of this car. You better get this guy out of my way. I'm about to like light light the four up and like <laughs> we're running this guy over. Get out of my way. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. So it was, it was great because I'm hearing that in my ear. And, and then I like would calmly and politely turn to Cameron and be like, Hey, I uh, appreciate your help. I think we got it. Uh, if you could just go stand over there, like I think we'll just, I think we'll just play through, you know. Wow. And, and he's like, through. he's like, okay, just playing through. We're just play through, like. <laughs> and, Do you mind if we play through? Yeah. yeah. And meanwhile, Aaron's just screaming in my ear, like, you know, just get that guy off the, you know, oh, out of the way. I'm, gosh. I'm driving this and blah blah blah. And it was, it was great. It was just like awesome. I know. I know I'm like little, point. Like, I'm, I don't know. I'm like I'm like pointing you know, at him and he's two, probably two like, things oh, yeah, playing out at once. It was great. Probably a lot good, but I'm like, get out of my way, pointing. You know. Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Cameron's going. Oh, he says I'm number one. Oh, yeah, that's cool. I'm uh, number one. You know. <laughs> no, definitely the. the I learned a big it lesson. Was fun. I mean, on, I, on the radio yeah. communication side of it, having that handheld with his helmet on and him out of the car, like you were just saying a minute ago, having that normal tone conversation while things are getting wild and getting Western and, you know, winch lines are coming out. It's so cool to have the conversation with the guy out of the car at like a normal level where normally you're just screaming and nobody knows what you're saying. The cars are so loud. The tires are blowing off, you know, like nobody. Yeah. The the air's fresh air system. You 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 know, you're just pointing and yelling for no reason. Yeah. It's, it's so rad and I've seen it, you know, several times now, whether it's with Lesage or with Aaron, to look them in the eyes from thirty feet away, like, key the mic. Go a little bit say, left. Go a little bit me. left. And then it, you, you know, know or like yeah. I got this. Yeah, like you you got this. Like you you tell them like turn a little driver and go forward and, and like it works. And then you're just like, Oh that that was the most valuable thing ever. So that's your rugged radio setup there that you can do that. Yeah. The um what happened? 
I, th I think maybe his phone died or something. Chris is going to have to do some editing now. Uh oh, what happened? <laughs> we just lost. Did he lost him? Speaking, he just of, speaking, off? Of how, speaking of how important comms yeah, are. Yeah, rugged radios, comms. It's, What's it's going on? To, it's important to charge your phone before you... Oh, no, he wasn't plugged <laughs> yeah. in. He but no, I would, he I would leave the, the helmet on and plug the, you know, the handheld rugged right into the, the helmet. And it's, you know, Robert and I did that. I think we did that probably even my first KOH. Really? So it, it's, That's it's the way cool. to go. It is absolutely the way to go. I, I always see teams not do it, and I'm kind of blown away that, that that's not just kind of part of everyone's program. But Yeah, I would want those comms outside of the car. Oh, um, I don't know. Where were, where were we at now? <laughs> where were we? <laughs> the line, the line, the, my favorite line of the entire race was I said, Kevin, where are we at? He's like, man, I don't know what to tell you. We've been down this trail three times. Like, I vividly <laughs> remember him saying that. It's like, I mean, I know that, but everything looks the same out here. There's either rocks or sand. Right. Everything looks the same to me. I, I was. <laughs> I could tell the pressure. I, I was like, like, how do you not know yeah. where we are? It's like. I think I, I think I finally let it out at that point because we'd been driving <laughs> Johnson Valley between pre-running and qualifying and race day and like lap two and lap three. We'd been driving it for a week and a half. And, and every time we turned a corner, he's like, where are we? And I'm like, dude, this is, you know, X, Y, Z. And he's right. like, he's like have we been here? And I'm like, yeah, like three <laughs> times. You know, and it's just like, it, I, I, knew I it mean, was it's you, a blur. Like, I don't, yeah. that's where, it, it, that's where it no, I mean, it, that you were able yeah. to ride with me and like point me in the right direction. Cause you know, without having those, you know, there's parks in, you know, local to me that you can put me next to a rock and be like, Oh yeah, that's the time we broke the axle shaft. And we, you know, we had to kill the cooler of beer waiting for the guy to, you know, bring another one back, you know, <laughs> where, you know, I don't, I have hardly any experience out at Johnson Valley. You know, that was the first time I've ever actually yeah. hit 90% it, of those trails. Yeah. And even, you know, even if I was frustrated, like I can easily look at it all now and go, well, that that's okay. That's not Aaron's job. Like his job was to drive and he did that great. He, you know, yeah, like his right. rock crawl, his rock right. crawling and, and comfortability in the rocks is insane. Like there's no angle we could put the car at that made him uncomfortable. Like he's done so much gnarly wreck wheeling that like this trail race course stuff like didn't even phase him so his car control and and all that like that's what he's supposed to be able to do and he did it and and if he doesn't know if we're on wrecking ball or jack north or like that, it really it doesn't right. matter that's that's my job like that's what i was right. there for so i i think that you know those are those things that like you know aaron built a car aaron race king of the hammers aaron finished king of the hammers but like i guess that is something that i can feel some pride in is that i helped him get there you know and, and that's i guess that's part of that well, teamwork thing well well Aaron, said or jones i tell you what man i would i would have just been driving in circles all day i'd be like man that lot looks a little familiar <laughs> must have hit that a couple of times i'm not sure and that that's what i'm uh, you know back to what i said earlier i just you know I, I was really looking forward to Eric Wicks and Kevin Jones doing the race, but unfortunately that didn't pan out. And then this was like the next deal. And I'm like, when I walked into your pit, I was like, you guys are very simpatico. And, and that's what I've heard throughout this podcast is like, you guys are on the same page yeah. and, and really yinged and yanged off of each other. Um, like Chris and I do with this podcast and it, it, that's, that's super cool to hear and, and watch, you know, this thing unfold here. And, um, it obviously was a benefit for both of you to, to be able to complete KOH. I mean, you know, yeah. listening to, I, some of these stories are new to me that I heard tonight and it's just, it's cool. It is just cool to get some of that inside track and how you guys overcame and moved forward and like, you know, it, it's stories just, we built in that last week or stories of a yeah. lifetime, you know, you, you can't, right. there's no yeah, dollar absolutely. amount you could ever put absolutely. on last week, you know? Very well said, very well said. And that's, that's what life's all about, right? Is the experiences and, and having these, 
you know, times that you could look back on when you're sitting in the rocking chair and you can't freaking barely get out of your rocking chair and go, <laughs> you know what? I freaking raised King of the Hammers Man. and I freaking finished. Yeah, Chris is already there <laughs> uh, and he, he hasn't raised King of the Hammers. Even the but, you know, it, stories, that's, you know, that we've got like, come on, <laughs> there's so many that we, we made, I can't even believe it. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, to, yeah. to, to jump on that, I mean, the, the think about the experience for Kevin Jones, Ultra 4 Jones, to to jump in a 4,400 car and experience a 4,400 car race. I mean, he's been through a 4,800 car race numerous times, whether Ridgecrest, you know, King of the Hammers a couple times, and some short course stuff. But I mean, and, and obviously he helped you, you know, with your first King of the Hammers 4,400 race, which is, you know, awesome. So as I said earlier in the podcast when you know maybe next year when kevin kevin's car is done you know he's racing king of the hammers in his 4800 car maybe you'll be his right seat and and you guys will help each other out again in that I manner and he'll, i don't know if he'll want so. to but he may... i think he would just get mad at me <laughs> he'd be like this guy doesn't know where he's going i'm not listening to him <laughs> yeah, he better he better learn the trails by then. Yeah. Right. Well, I yeah. mean, but no, I mean, all that, all that. I mean, you're spot on, Chris. And that, like, the amount of times Aaron and I talked about like the future for both of us, and like, man, we need to pit together. We need to be a part of this. Like, even non-race things, he's like, dude, get your car done. I want to come out to JV. Like, we'll get the girls together. We'll go out and do trail riding. Like, I mean, I hate to make it all sappy or whatever, but like as cool as this whole thing was and Aaron finishing his first King of the hammers and all that, like I got, I got a friend out of the deal. So I, I mean, it, it's yeah. great that, yeah, you know, that this was the most positive experience I could have possibly asked for wow. as, as far as doing this. Cool. That's so right on. Cool. Right on. Well, Bring, awesome. KOH memories, memories bringing people life. together. <laughs> How about this? Memories to last a lifetime. Well, right? it is. Yeah. It's, it's, Hopefully we have many some... more to make. That's, that's yeah, for, yeah sure. for sure. Yeah. Well, any any shout outs, Aaron, that you want to make to some sponsors or or people you care about other than Kevin Jones? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Putting up with all the late nights in the shop and everything. Kevin, right? Barely knowing me and just jumping in a car with me and saying, "Let's do this," you know, with a you know, literally a couple days' notice. Um, you know, all my friends, Troy and Luke and Garrett and. Tom and Mylene, all the guys back at camp, you know, and th that helped us out in pit and everything. Like, I mean, they're just as important, you know? Sure. sure absolutely. I think, uh, Aaron, Aaron, I think you got stepped on when you talked about Brittany at first. Oh, did I? Oh, so give her, give <laughs> her, Brittany? give her, give her another shout out. Oh, give her, Who's give Brittany? Her give her some late nights and sitting around camp and I'm not talking to her for three days at a time because all we're worried about. Is this is the girlfriend. Everything. Yeah. Uh -huh. Right on, right on. Drive. Well, cool. Um, how do people get a? Oh, man, your audio is breaking up. I wonder why that's happening now. But uh, any, any. Uh, how do people get a hold of you or follow you? I'm sure you have yeah, an Instagram, uh, Smith right? Off Road Aaron or Aaron Smith on yeah. Facebook. I'm not. I'm not a super. Yeah, Smith Off Road Aaron with double A. Yeah, a a, -A not a superstar a -A like Kevin Ron. Jones over here, but you know. <laughs> I, I do get on it every once in a while. It, it was great being out at Hammers with him because he posted something. I would just repost it. I didn't even have to think about. It. <laughs> did my you, social media did you guy now. feel this? Did you feel the celebrity status when people were just popping into your your camp, going like, "Oh, Ultra Four Jones." Every oh, there's there's the the, the truck that went I'm up. Like, Who are these people? Where do they come from? I don't yeah. know. <laughs> they just walked by. I'm yeah. like, hey man, I'm trying to do something right here. I'm like, I've got a wrench in my right. hand. Go away. The, and then Kevin would just yeah. walk him out to the back and 30 minutes later, he's handing him, you know, a six pack of, you know, rod and hammer beer and, you know, telling right. him all the social stuff. And it, it's, it was pretty wild. So good. <laughs> well, that's your indoctrination yeah. right there. Yeah. You're learning from one of the best. So yeah. there you go. There you go. Kevin, That's do so we want to have a shout out from you? Does it, well, everybody knows how to get a hold of you, right? right. We, yeah. We've never been uh, on the podcast. Yeah, I know. No, I, I mean, yeah, I think everybody gets the that that part of it, how to find me and all that. But uh, I mean, even though I didn't drag a race car down there, I was I was in the desert for twelve days. So um, I don't even know if my wife will listen to this. I guess she will if I send her the link. But uh, no, I I'm so thankful to have Mallory on my side, and uh, you know, lets me lets me do all this crazy 
stupid stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've got to thank your wife, you know, for letting you go. Like, I don't know any that would just be like, okay, you're just going to go with some random guy. See you in 12 days. Yeah. Good luck. Yeah. You're not, you're not yeah. going to have much service she's... while you're out there. Right. Yeah. She's yeah, special. She's <laughs> special. She's a good woman. Yeah. Yeehaw, yeehaw. My God, what a handy woman. <laughs> <laughs> well, gentlemen, thank you very much for taking time out of your weekend schedule to talk to Jason and me, myself, on Wheeling Wine Whiskey Podcast. Thank you guys for letting us get on this. This is my first podcast. You have to put it down. You have to go get the tally book and put a put a little mark on it. <laughs> okay, we're gonna uh, one, put a mark there, and we're and, we're, um, and Kevin. I don't know. We'll see. So we lost. See. We lost Kevin's count. So Aaron Amber's Smith, in the lead Aaron right Smith now. One and Kevin yeah. Jones forty six. Here we go. We'll go right here. <laughs> Lorenzo's just like shaking his head. Yeah, he's, he's like, really, really. We're running out. Of, we're running out of space on the web for, for Kevin yeah. Jones episodes. Yeah. No, it's yeah. it's it's so good to follow the journey and uh, love these stories, the behind the scenes, and there there's just you know hundreds of thousands of stories oh going God. on out there on the lake bit, but that's why this, this show's never going to end. This is, so, <laughs> this is so good. And, um, man, Aaron hats off to you that that yes. was a badass accomplishment. And I love that it was in a bomber car. Um, and, and just freaking sin it, man. That's, that's, that's a hell of an accomplishment. Uh, so sitting on your rocking chair here from uh, 30, 40 years from now, you can say, yeah. He's in a rocking it. chair now. Oh, he's in a rocking chair now. <laughs> I can't those, see him. From all those but, hard uh, rocks. Last week. <laughs> 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 so freaking good. I love this stuff. Uh, we we are passionate about telling yes. the stories. And uh, as much as you guys are passionate about sitting in that race car for eight and a half, 10 hours uh, getting the shit beat out of you. So 12, 12 hours and two minutes, but who's counting? So, um, yeah, very, very cool. Thank you guys for your time and your stories. This, this is awesome. Yeehaw. Absolutely. Thank Thank you guys. How cool is that? I mean, the insight, the, you know, from the driver's seat, the passenger seat of a 4,400 bomber car, um, never raced KOH before nope. and, uh, rookie, um, class, you know, and to finish the only rookie to finish 4,400. Um, he got his uh, money back for qualifying. That's right. <laughs> got his, How his cool entry fees back. Um, so man, what a great story and, uh, cool people. And like I said, it's it just, when I first met, Aaron, I just knew it was going to be a good match and knowing mm-hmm. Kevin and their personalities were so much alike. And um, obviously it worked out good for them on race day. Absolutely. No, I mean, I enjoyed talking to them and, and, and you know, learning about this new friendship and, and uh, racing relationship. Absolutely a great story and, and, and fun times. Yeah. So, uh, you know, one of many stories at KOH, but it, it you know, there's some cool insight there of what it takes to race, um, you know, financially, mentally, physically, the whole, whole gamut. Right. Yeah. And, uh, just, just getting to the lake bed, um, you know, much less getting to the start line and, and physically racing. So, um, I, I hope you guys enjoyed that one. It, it was, it was fun for us to, to circle back with them. I, I'd been in and out of their pits a lot during the KOH week and watching their progress, their trials and tribulations. And, um, unfortunately, you know, having a, a, a ring gear situation early on, luckily it happened early on. So they were able right. to uh, get that fixed and, uh, and to race and, and successfully, uh, cross the finish line. So minus a shock, minus, minus a bypass shock that a $4,000, $4,000 bypass shock. Oh God, that <laughs> Kevin was holding his lap. Um, <laughs> how, yeah. much do, how much of those weigh? I don't know. Well, it was probably like 70 pounds. I don't Man. know. hundred pounds. Don't hit a Not G out. Don't hit a G out with that in there. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. Woo. Uh, um, but yeah, just, just really cool stuff. So, um, yeah, I don't know what else to say. We covered a lot of ground well, there. So that's, that's a long it, one. It was fun. It's a long one. So, so we're just going to push the bow on this. There we go. And- <laughs> it, 
Put a bow on it, Chris. Well, it's uh, so put whipped cream on that pork chop. If you <laughs> <coughs> excuse mm. me, if you want to, he's still suffering from hammerlung three wanna, weeks later. If you want to get a hold of Jason or Chris, you can email us at Jason or Chris at WheelingWineWhiskey dot com. You can also DM Jason at the Instagram at Wheeling Wine Whiskey. You can also give us a call and leave a voice message. Our number is four zero eight. 800-5169. What's that number, Jason? 408 5169 And don't forget to visit our website. That's right. Where we've got all our episodes. We've got our merch. So if you want some Wheeling Wine and Whiskey merch, uh, you can get all of it there. Johnny does a great job at Dirtbag Clothing managing that for us. And we got our Element Fire Extinguisher there. Oh, yeah. Uh, so we have those in stock. We got the tactical mount, the soft... Uh, you know, nylon tactical mount there that's Velcro. Velcro so it's uh-huh. that's a cool mount for buggies. Um, and we also have the roll bar mount on on the website now. So um, you know, if you don't have your element yet, you go should, on there, check it out, yep. and uh, get a mount and tell your friends and uh, you know, write a five star review about the podcast. I'll send you that's a sticker right. if you DM me and say, "Hey, I'm." Six string trucker or whatever, and uh, they never you know, claim their prize. No, they never did. Six string wow. trucker. Wow, <laughs> I got a call back into their podcast yeah, about, about six string trucker. <laughs> I got a good one coming up for them, but, anyways, all right. Um, I, that's all I got, Chris. I think that's it. All right, with that, we're out. We're out.